Happy, happy new year, everyone. Before we get into the first episode of the new decade, I want to direct your attention to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. Select the reward tier that works for you and slide on in to the Thunderbuns of Hot Dog Club. You'll see all the options on the page, but for a quick rundown, for $5 a month, you get all the full-length bonus episodes. And for $7 a month, well, you get all those full-length bonus episodes plus all the full-length, full of hijinks listener questions episodes. But the most exquisite and rewarding option, of course, is the $10 option, because for that, not only do you get all those bonus episodes, all those listener questions episodes, you get all of the movie clubs. Most recently, Hot Dog Club enjoyed a 90-minute episode on Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead with Alaska Thunder Funds, and two and a half hours on Drop Dead Gorgeous with Trixie Mattel. Coming up very soon, Heathers with Peaches Christ, and two movie clubs with Willem. That'll be for Casino and A Star Is Born. And of course, by joining Hot Dog Club, well, you help to support this show. So head on over to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into this episode. A Russian ballerina stomping on a bureaucrat. A perky suburban housewife who just got into scat. Give me a beat, bow, 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 bow. It's whimsically volatile. We are talking to the wonderful goth Charlotte. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for... <laughs> um, being on the show, I'm so happy we could make this happen. Thanks. Me too. Yeah. I was uh, in Vegas. I am in Vegas, rather. I'll, I'll correct that. In Vegas, originally just to tape with Pia Zadora. And then I thought, oh, wait a second. We know what we could make happen. Yeah. And hopefully, Lance, we can uh, get one with you sometime soon. I would love that. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Say hi to everyone, Lance. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm just being noisy in the background. I'm looking for headphones. But... Actually, you were being very quiet no, while I... looking for headphones. Yeah. yeah. I think the headphones might be upstairs in the camera bag. In the spider room. Yeah, I just don't want to be too loud on that. No worries, baby. Oh, that's sweet of you. Thanks. Uh, we met briefly at one of the porn awards. Was it the mm-hmm. X Biz or one of those? One of There's those. There's so many. They all kind of blend together. <laughs> <laughs> How many are there generally? Like uh, too roughly. many. Yeah, and well, they're all they're... kind of around the same time of year. Is that right? Yeah, it's such a pain in the ass. Like this this time of year after Halloween, it starts getting crazy because yeah. people stop shooting as often Mm -hmm. because everybody's going to see their family for thanksgiving and everything oh right yeah christmas slows down and then january is dead because x-biz and evn and then Mm -hmm. there's just there's so many yeah yeah january is a funny time what's august like in terms of the porn business because i was talking to a friend the other day about how certain industries just shut down in august and then we started to think we started to go through different ones like they Mm -hmm. all seem to shut down in august what about porn Yeah, historically August is usually slow for me, especially out here. People are like, it's too hot. Uh, It would be like cruel and inhumane um, to shoot. But yeah, my my August was pretty busy. Um, Usually if it's slow, I'll just like pop over to Europe and do a bunch of scenes there. Mm -hmm. How often do you go to Europe? Uh, It used to be like every other month, but Mm -hmm. I'm trying to stay home more Mm because it's all the traveling gets really hard on your body. Like I never know what time it is. Like I'm always super (laughs) jet lagged, but I like being over there. I like staying busy, but sometimes it's, it's good to have a break. Yeah, sure. Now, how long do you usually stay for a stretch? And have your sip, have a sip of water because I'll, I'll I'll constantly just uh, barrage with questions and then people will be dehydrated. Normally I stay like a week minimum, Mm -hmm. sometimes two or three weeks. It's easier like to stay longer because right. uh yeah your body's so used to it and sometimes you pick up work at the last minute so mm-hmm. it's it's good to plan for more time than you need right yeah and you can get kind of scrambled if you're there for only a few days mm-hmm. right i was just in england for the my first time and so i was there originally for 10 days and I extended the trip and i'm glad i did because it takes a couple of days to just even have your head go back to normal oh totally like i used to do trips where I would just be gone for five days. You lose a day traveling. Yeah. Then I'm there for three days. And then I'm doing like a double anal gangbang every day. So like by the time I blink, like I'm already back on the plane home and my ass hurts and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And that's not what the time you want your ass to hurt. No. Right? Yeah. What's the usual um, aftercare process after you've done a series of double anal shows if stuff hurts like i usually get some cream from the drugstore there's this special shit i don't know what it is because it's all in czech and i don't speak czech but (laughs) there's like a picture of like some leaves and i think Mm -hmm. it's like oak tree bark ointment okay yeah it feels like it's working okay (laughs) (laughs) i think it's working i think that's all that matters right like placebo or not if it's like soothing terrific yeah yeah my shit bounces back to normal like the next day (laughs) it closes up like a 
I don't know what what you would call that. Like a magic. It's I'm like trying a to valve. think of like a valve. There yeah. you go. Like a valve. Yeah, it's done its business for the time, and now right. it's back to normal. It's yeah. uh, it's sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think people think I'm like walking around with like a giant open <laughs> ass and like wearing diapers all the time. It's like no, if I'm wearing a diaper, it's for like a different reason. But <laughs> yeah, so I have uh, a normal normal hole. <laughs> so a diaper would be for a shoot, perhaps, or maybe are you just feeling a little lazy? Yeah, if I'm feeling like <laughs> <laughs> And that's another aspect of, of your career. I mean, we're, we'll, I'm sure we'll get back to these two topics a few times. So mm-hmm. piss plays a large role in a lot of your work. Totally. And when did you first discover that you enjoyed water sports? I don't know. I, I always watched it mm-hmm. on um, when I was watching porn. And uh, there was a lot of things I was interested in before I got into the industry that I mm. didn't explore until... I had like a safe environment to do it and sure. I was getting paid, which is always a bonus. Mm. Uh, and safety too. I mean, that's totally like, and you want to make sure everybody's hydrated and everybody's like tested and everything. Sure. So that's good. You've only been in the industry. Am I right? Five years. Is that right? Uh, I just, it's been about four years, four, four years, four or five years or so. And what was the first scene that you did? The first scene, it was for this company called Asylum out of um, Is it New, A-S-S New Jersey. A-S-S yeah, two, two S's. It's like Asylum. Yeah. Um, and this beautiful woman was like entirely clad in latex wearing like some nurse's outfit. And she had a giant strap on and was just plowing my ass. And um, I was in some kind of suspension where I was on my side, mm-hmm. um, suspended from the ceiling with a bunch of candles over me. So I was just getting burned with candle wax everywhere. And then they candle waxed um, my vagina shut. We didn't use that at all. So it wasn't used. That's so sad. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Like I, I prefer like doing anal for scenes just because my pussy gets worn out, but my ass is like, you could drive a truck through and it's like (laughs) fine the next day. (laughs) I think you said in one interview, you refer to it as the elastic butthole. Yeah. It's super elastic and it's, it's my primary, like the vagina is the secondary one. Oh, okay. Sure. It's reserved for like at home use. (laughs) Well, uh, recently you did the quadruple, right? Oh yeah, that was cool. That, I loved the clip I saw of that, and uh, it horrified Katya, by the way. So I wanted you to know that. Katya, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was delighted. I knew I knew it was going to happen when I sent it, and he sends his love and admiration, oh, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now, when did that uh, idea occur? Now, and also, I might be naive. It may be that this is like a more common thing than I am aware of. Um, well, it's not incredibly common. There's maybe like a handful of people in the world who have done it It, it's more of a novelty thing for sure and Mm -hmm. it's like once you do it like where do you go from there it's like (laughs) it's not like i can do one every week it's kind of like yeah okay she did it now like i don't know now i just do like other types of scenes um you don't want to go to quintuple or anything like that right no no... I, i don't think that's humanly possible and um People were really angry with me. They're like, really? you said it was four dicks, but one of them is a dildo. And it's like, you get four dudes together and try <laughs> to rearrange those body parts. It's not humanly possible. If it yeah. was, like, I would have done it <laughs> I'm already. I'm sure. I'm sure you had, like, uh, schematics and all kinds of things yeah, laid out, right? but, you know, like, trial and error, this is what we found that works <laughs> and to where you can actually see what's going on. In terms of trial and error, was it a bit of um, working it out on the day? Not really. You know, we, that scene was done like before we were finished by like 1145 in the morning. It was really quick. Wow. And what time did you start? Um, I think we started shooting at like maybe 1045. We, the only time we stopped was because a model outside the room like fainted (laughs) because she was like brand new and thought like, oh, I should stop eating before anal. It's like, don't, you don't have to starve yourself. What do you do then? Because a lot of people have said starving for anal. That's one phrase yeah. I heard. Well, you know, everybody's body is different. And, um, you know, you just have to find what works for you. But for me, I just eat like pizza and stuff like the day before. Mm-hmm. I take like a lot of, I take fiber every day. So okay. everything's kind of streamlined as it is. Sure. And um, I just do like a water enema until everything's clean, like morning of. And then I have like a normal breakfast and like mm-hmm. I eat like afterwards. Oh, that's great. That's really encouraging to hear because a lot of people think yeah. that you do have well, to be. Well, you, you overthink it and then yeah. you're hangry and your body's out of whack. You don't have your electrolytes and you don't have enough fiber. So like you're going to 
not have like good shits. You might, <laughs> most of the people who I've seen that starve themselves, they end up shitting more than the ones who don't oh, starve themselves. Okay. Yeah. So they bring on the thing that they're terrified of most. Yeah. And like all that stress, like it just tightens your butthole and it makes things like painful and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Just like proceed as normal and <laughs> be relaxed about it. Yeah. It helps. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And of course it seems like the most essential element is the water enema. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to go clear? Oh, uh, it depends. Like if you have like a, like a decent fiber intake, like in your daily life, like it could take like five or 15 minutes, but I always give myself extra time. I don't know if it's going to take five minutes or an hour. Sure. I also like to take my time with it. So I wake up like, I think I woke up at like four in the morning hmm. before we did the quadruple anal because I had to be on set at like seven. Sure. So I wanted to like watch TV and like take my time with it. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of like ease into the day. Totally. How is the selection process for the uh, men in the scene? Like, what, what, what? How does that come about? Um, well, this was for legal porno, so they pretty much hire this particular director, Giorgio Grandi. He hires the same group of dudes. Okay, they do like two, sometimes three gangbangs like a day. Oh, okay, sure. Like five so, or six days a week. Yeah. So they're it's like a factory. They just have. <laughs> Like they put you into the position, you can kind of just let your body go limp and they'll arrange you around. Oh, perfect. They're totally professional. And I've, I've probably done like, you know, at least like 15 or so scenes, like with that group of dudes mm -hmm. in particular. So we all know each other like very well. Sure. So. That's good. Yeah. They know the ins and outs of everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Some other extreme scenes that you've done. And I don't know if it's a scene or if it was just a still that I saw. I'm a little squeamish when it comes to bugs. And was it cockroaches that I saw? Oh, yeah, that was cockroaches. Yeah, I've never done like a scene with bugs and animals. I think that's illegal. But okay. I know people in Japan do that. But yeah, that was just a for fun thing. Okay. Well, again, I'm squeamish. So I, I figured <laughs> I'd ask you. I didn't know. Yeah, and I saw it a while ago on Twitter. And I was like, what's oh, oh I don't know. And just moved yeah, along. Yeah, I love like, bugs. Like that movie Creep Show. That last section of it, I struggle with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you love bugs. Now, when did that start? When did, as a kid? Uh, yeah, at birth, like, I don't know, people would always call me Charlotte. My government name is Charlotte. Okay, so yeah. Pe I always had spiders as pets and stuff. And You have a spider room creatures. here, don't you? Yeah, I have six in there at the moment, one scorpion, and I just got a snake a couple of days ago. Oh, congratulations. Is it Noodle? Yeah, Noodle is yeah. his name. He's very small, and he's shaped like a tube or a noodle. Uh -huh. He's all neck. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first snake that you've had yeah i've had uh quite a lot of lizards and things like that salamanders and stuff mm -hmm. but things without hands or feet that's new to me i got to meet battle cat <sighs> thank you he's he's very fluffy and he's lovely he, he loves to greet people mm -hmm. yeah he, he reminded me of my little guy lemmy and then who's the uh the one who's fed up with it all oh this very lazy one his name's jonesy jonesy cool and, and um and then, i have a black cat ripley he's probably like upstairs asleep or something cool and we have one fourth cat who you might never see her name is baby cat secret she's, cat this is a secret cat i like she's that. very shy yeah. she's very nervous it took her like a year and a half to sit on my lap really wow she's very cute she looks like just like jonesy except smaller she's really small feet but she's very round uh-huh yeah but she's a brown tabby and oh, okay yeah she's just more like potato shaped <laughs> now did you get her uh as a rescue uh yeah so battle cat and baby cat are lance's cats mm -hmm. and then ripley and jonesy i rescued uh when i lived in la okay now when did you live in la um I think like 2016 to 2018. What was LA like when you were there for you? What was your situation? Mm, well, I lived in the Valley for a bit and then I lived in Hollywood for about a year mm -hmm. and I just thought it smelled like pee, but not the good kind. <laughs> like I would, And you're a connoisseur. Yeah, I'm kind of a connoisseur when it comes to urine. I don't know. I would tell people like, oh yeah, I live in Hollywood. They're like, oh wow, that must be so glamorous. <laughs> and like, it is like if you're in West Hollywood and like, oh my God, I saw RuPaul like walking down the street, like the, for those moments. But yeah. when you're just like walking home and like dudes are like following you down the street and you have like a bag of groceries, like you're trying to, and then the elevator doesn't work. So you have to walk up like three flights of stairs. And Yeah. And the guys are like lingering downstairs. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's so expensive there. Actually, yeah. And the cockroaches right. are huge and they don't pay rent. 
<laughs> no, they don't. They don't even chip in. No, not bastards. even a little bit. I know Hollywood. It's funny because it really is a different thing from West Hollywood or North mm-hmm. Hollywood or, you know, however. Oh, totally. But especially different from, from West. I, I live in West Hollywood. Love West Hollywood. Love West Hollywood. It's so Amazing. great. And uh, I love like, I and mean, I'm right in between. Well, I shouldn't say, but I'm right in between two of the big streets. I just love the streets there. Yeah. Right in between Melrose and Santa Monica oh, nice. Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you two are out uh, in L.A., you're going to have to come visit. Yeah. I love um, that. And the corner shop is a Gelson's, which I love how bougie that is. I love Gelson's. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I think I love supermarkets and they're the best supermarket. Like there's one in Los Feliz that I just inside, there's like a pink glow to it. It's a nice it's thing. Good. They have good meat, good cheese. Yeah. And prepared foods too. Yeah. Do you cook a lot? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I really like baking. I like um, making cheesecake. When did you start doing that? Mm, when I was a kid. And then, yeah. Uh, Recently, when my husband turned 40, like I got like a Cuisinart offer, uh-huh. wedding registry and stuff. So I made a, a cheesecake for him. And it was cool. The wedding registry is a fun thing, right? You were it's able great. To put, it makes me yeah. want to get married again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Renew the vows. And yeah. Then, yeah. Where did you two get married? Uh, we got married here mm-hmm. um, at like a little country club. I just wanted to get married outside. Yeah. And it was, it was the middle of February and it snowed the next day, <laughs> which is really unusual for Vegas. February is a good uh, month to get married in. How close to Valentine's Day was it? It was two days after. So it was President's Day, and we're just really enthusiastic about President's Day. <laughs> um, no, it was a it was a three-day weekend, so I picked that because I figured our, our family and friends from out of state who had like yeah. normie jobs, they could stay an extra day in Vegas. That's nice, and also it's not on Valentine's Day because that, that is complicated for another number of reasons. Oh my God, if you wanted to go out and get dinner on your anniversary, you'd never be able to find a table anywhere. No, and my birthday is Valentine's Day. So, yeah. <gasps> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, here, it's great though, because uh, anytime if I was single or whatever, it's like, I don't care. It's my birthday. A friend who was bumming out about, um, you know, romance gone wrong, I'm like, it's, it's my birthday. So, like, we'll do something or just celebrate my birthday. And the only funny thing is that it's easy for people to remember it, especially in the family. Mm-hmm. So, I'm not the best at remembering birthday dates. I want to. I love to get people things for the birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so now, thankfully, for calendar app will help me with that. But uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's great. But I've always enjoyed actually that. Then when I'm in a relationship, it, it's like one of those things where it's like, well, we'll do two things, like one for Valentine's Day and one for my birthday. It basically means two parties or two oh, things. Sweet. Yeah, which is fun. It's a nice way around it. Now, when did you and Lance meet? We met uh, December 2016. We had been talking on Twitter for a while. We were sending each other pictures of cats, so it was, it was pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. I was living in San Francisco at the time. He was living in Florida at the time, because mm-hmm. um, I always like people who live really far from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thing. That's yeah. your kink. <laughs> that, yeah, that's my kink, like people who are unavailable. <laughs> Uh, not just emotionally oh no 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 physically, physically as well yeah yeah the farther you are the more i like it. Uh, but yeah he uh we were trying to like get together and shoot stuff for a while but yeah it's so hard to schedule stuff like he would be passing through town shooting for kink and yeah. then i would be out of town or sick or something so mm-hmm. finally he was like oh i'll just buy you a plane ticket and take you to florida and then i like when i met him i was like okay like i really like you yeah. And then like a couple months later he moved to Vegas, so then it's not too much of a long distance thing. It's like a one hour flight. But was that troubling though? You were like, you know, you're not so far away now. Uh it was <laughs> well, it was it was a good way for me to ease into being in a relationship. Yeah, yeah right. Because you still I'm like I, I only have to see you every couple weeks. <laughs> and then uh he would drive, but I would have like five hours notice. Like I'm coming over. So I'm like, okay, I can clean up the apartment a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, five hours notice is a good thing to have in any situation, right? right? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. You don't want 35 minutes. Hey, I'm nearby. By the way, have you ever cleaned up an apartment faster than when someone's coming over like that? I no, never, no. never. <laughs> me either. I had stuff that was sitting around that had been shipped actually from Massachusetts, just sitting there. And mm-hmm. it was after, uh, breaking up with the person that, um, had lived there with me. So the place was sort of like formative. It was like not quite my full place yet. Right. And there was boxes, you know, and you're just kind of like bummed out. And then someone was coming over and like magically everything in like 90 minutes. Yeah, it was impressive, and I it's still. It's a squeeze, great motivator. Yeah, it is. It is. Nothing will motivate like that, will it? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, 
I don't know. I I just like don't like people thinking like I live like a slob, even though I I kind of do. Like I don't <laughs> no, do my look, laundry you, a lot. You don't look. There's no slobbiness in here. This looks like a, a, first of all, a lovely house Thanks. that has a lot of character. You're welcome. And it it's very much. Um, representative of, of the two of you and oh, thanks. you're welcome and it just looks lived in which is a nice thing you know what i mean yeah it's strange when you walk into a place and people live there but it feels like an airbnb it does and it kind of <laughs> makes you want to leave yeah it's a strange thing yeah it's yeah. a bit too sterile very sterile yeah oh the other weird thing is apartment cooking smells i mean it's not exactly oh, God. yeah that's one that's one reason i can't live in an apartment anymore yeah yeah like because i like like how it smells when i'm cooking stuff but any, other people's cooking just doesn't smell that good. No, especially, especially when it mixes with all the other <laughs> stuff. And when it's like tomato based for some oh, reason. Yeah, yeah. It's gross. <laughs> anyway, so you met Lance then and then he was in Vegas and mm-hmm. it was not that long. He had a five hour window. And then uh, how long from there until the two of you moved in together? We had just got together right before I moved to my own apartment in Hollywood. Okay. That was really funny because he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm moving. <laughs> like, and he's like, okay, I'll drive over right now and help you. It's very sweet. It was so funny. And then he, he shows up to help me move my shit. And he's like, is this all of it? I'm like, yeah, these are all my worldly possessions. It was like five boxes of shit. <laughs> like, I didn't have anything. Yeah, I just wasn't ready to like move in with him that quick. And then after my lease was up he's like do you really want to live with me and i'm like yeah and then his like thing was he really wanted us to move into a house where i could have my own room for my spiders because sure. he's terrified of them <laughs> i love that i was gonna ask that i was curious i wanted to know what uh, lance is feeling about the critters like that he likes snakes he wasn't sure how he felt about scorpions and then i got one and then he decided he's not like scorpions <laughs> and uh he doesn't really like tarantulas like when one molts really? I, what like, a <laughs> I like i bring the mole i'm like oh babe look like this one molted isn't that cool like that's their old fangs and i like let him hold it and he's like uh <laughs> he gives it the old college try yeah but, yeah he's definitely like he hasn't killed any spiders since we started dating oh, which that's is nice. very sweet yeah how do you feel about uh, when you see just bugs on the street i love them yeah, you love them. Actually, we're looking right now, or I'm looking at uh, this photo. Let's describe it. You describe it, please, for the listeners. Um, it's a jumping spider taken with a macro lens. My friend took that picture, actually. It's a really cool photo. Thanks. It's, they just look really cute. They look like if a kitten was very small and mm-hmm. had like 10 eyes and eight legs. Yes. It would be that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right, actually. Seeing the eyes like that is rather remarkable. I'll put a photo up on Instagram. Anyone with arachnophobia, I'll try to put a spoiler uh, alert or some kind of warning. Trigger yeah. warning, rather. Trigger warning, yeah. Um, did, now, have you ever had a friend with arachnophobia come over? Yeah, they just are, like, afraid to be in the house. I'm like, dude, like, they're all, like, locked up. They're not, like, roaming freely. <laughs> My cats would have a heyday. <laughs> oh, that's right. And they all have their own enclosures. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Now, what is that? Is that, like, a little cage type of thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have like um, just little acrylic things and they have like a little water dish. They have a little hide like place for them to crawl into. You're sober, right? Mm-hmm, we and, both are. Right. And did the two of you become sober together? He, he's he been sober for 21 oh, years. that's right. Yeah. yeah. But um, I got sober like right like a couple months after we met. I was trying for a while and sure. then it just worked out like being in a relationship with like a sober person like he was a really good influence on me sure and also Um, it's easier too because you're like well i I can't really be slightly tuned up yeah yeah yeah. it kept me accountable so that was really good but it's just so much easier and like us both being sober we both want to leave like parties and events at the same time (laughs) sure (laughs) let me guess 75 minutes in yeah exactly (laughs) like babe let's go to taco bell this place sucks because those events, especially like, say, after parties in quotes. I only had fun at those when I was like drinking and doing coke in the bathroom. <laughs> and now that I don't do that, I'm like, will you remove that element? And it's literally like a bunch of like egos in the room. And that's not always fun. I was at some in front of some Hollywood club and the guy was like offering tickets to an after party. I was like, I could not think of anything worse. Like a bunch of strangers who want to get so fucked up at three in the morning. That yeah, does not no, sound, thank you. yeah, no thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> what were your drugs of choice, booze and Coke? Oh, basically anything. Like there's not much I haven't done. Like I, I drank a lot for sure. Did a lot of Coke, did a lot of pills, heroin, like 
all that stuff but everything was easier to like moderate or like quit cold turkey except the booze like okay yeah i challenged myself i was like okay i'm not gonna do coke for a week yeah but then i was still like drinking all day every day yeah so i thought i was just like i had like a I thought I just didn't like making coffee in the morning. I like cutting lines. Um, so <laughs> Listen, I thought, I'm just very efficient. Yeah, okay. I thought I was being efficient, but then I, I removed that and I'm I'm like, oh, I'm just an alcoholic who likes doing other stuff like <laughs> situationally. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like I, I can't drink or rather don't drink. So I, I just I, awesome. I yeah. Thanks. I mean I do other things, but um and I only started that a few years ago because I thought because I couldn't drink after trying very hard, you know, right. really putting not the for lack in. of trying. No, certainly <laughs> not. No, I don't give up easily. Yeah. Uh, then I thought that, well, that was the first stair step on a very large staircase and you can't really go to second floor if, you know, uh, turned out not to be the case for me, but yeah, booze to me, I have it in the house for guests, but it's not, it, not an option. Like, yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. And the weird thing is it's so readily available. Like it's the one thing that you could get anywhere anytime oh god especially in vegas like yes there's no like oh the bar shuts down at two it's like <laughs> no it the never... bar's open at eight in the morning <laughs> and people are there oh they're packed in the place i was amazed uh that i went down at the uh hotel i'm staying at the sahara mm -hmm. and there was people drinking and smoking now i used to be a cigarette smoker but still for some reason to see people smoking in a public place inside and the smells of different booze on people's breaths while I was waiting for the taxi oh, line. It's gross. It was gross. It actually gave me like a kind of like, I want to get out of here vibe. Like just waiting for the taxi. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was getting out, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that smell either. And there was a guy on the elevator and I had my red velvet jacket on and he, he was loaded and he was gross too. It was like a big, gross, dumb guy. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, are you a magician? I guess this is the vibe here. That's the worst. I don't really like going on the strip or into casinos late at night. Like if I'm meeting friends or something and then we're done with dinner and then I'm going home, the people get like drunker as the night wears on. <laughs> it's always the people watching is great, though. Like I like to sit at hotel or lobby bars in the casinos. Yeah. And I'll get like a seltzer water and watch people. There's always like. The group of bridesmaids and they yeah. start the night out strong like they're yeah. all, they all have their shoes on oh, okay. and then like as the night progresses <laughs> like they're all like carrying their shoes like somebody's like being carried like somebody's sure. throwing up in like a bag someone's ranting like low someone's key, right? ranting yeah. like two are fighting like somebody's holding a tiara <laughs> and a sash like it's, it's a mess but it's like a, a beautiful like chaotic disaster yeah it's one, amazing to watch at a distance it's beautiful but you mm -hmm. don't want to be anywhere near it no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too about booze too because so much bad behavior is sort of excused because well I, we were really loaded or it was a crazy night oh, or totally. yeah it's really dangerous there's like a ton of accidents here because people are just drunk driving all the time oh sure yeah and people just generally like drive like assholes this morning some dude was like following me onto and off of the highway oh, no. like he was a foot away from my back bumper like chasing me down like hella pissed off wow it was like really aggressive and unnecessary but i haven't experienced that like anywhere else like, really people are just even in la like people cut you off i'm like okay buddy like you you had to be there that's yeah. okay you got a big day today yeah yeah like i i don't get that road rage so i don't I can't relate to it. I don't get road rage much either. I think I get if I've been really scared once or twice, and then mm -hmm. I'll yell "fuck off" or something like that. Massachusetts loves road rage. Oh yeah, yeah. Massachusetts, Vegas. There's a there is some yeah, kind of yeah something in the air here. <laughs> what other parts of the country did you live in? Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Northern California. Oh, okay, what yeah. parts roughly? Just the um, like uh, north of Sacramento, like oh, that okay. area. Yeah. So it's really not a lot going on. And then uh, I moved to the Bay, and then LA, and then here. I've just slowly been making my way south, I guess. So right. we'll see, like, if I end up in Mexico next year. It might be though, that might rate. be. <laughs> <laughs> there might it might be like this triangle of like here, Europe, Mexico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what parts of Europe do you like to go to? Um, I love Berlin. Mm -hmm. Prague is great. I love Paris. Um, but really, Budapest. Sometimes I mostly work in Prague though, because okay. the rates are the best. Mm -hmm. I've been to Spain a lot, but uh, I don't really work much in those places because like a boy girl will be like 300. And what would it be in Prague? In Prague, it would be like five or six, but I normally don't 
just do boy girl i do like a gangbang because it, it makes more sense yeah sure it is the more sensible choice yeah isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other scenes that you do we talked about the uh the quadruple anal you do a lot of extreme scenes right mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, since I started out doing extreme scenes, I just kind of got stuck doing that. But every now and then I do like romantic stuff or mm -hmm. um, I got like a lead role in like a horror feature recently for Kink oh, um, with me and Casey Calvert. That mm -hmm. was a really fun movie. I do like a lot of domination stuff. I finally I worked for Divine Bitches for Kink.com. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. And I also have my own clips for sale where I just kick dudes in the balls and fuck them in the ass. Which is like something people don't really expect from me because they think I'm totally submissive. But did you start out more of a, a in submissive? Yeah, and work? then yeah, I was getting like pissed off by people telling me what to do, and then I found <laughs> out like I'm I'm more of a switch. But I, I do stuff like that, and then I really like doing girl girl. A lot of people don't know this about me, but like before porn, I didn't really have any attraction to guys until i was like 20 oh really okay that yeah. was like i just thought i was a lesbian and then i like had to come out as bisexual again <laughs> but i i always had like way more girlfriends like i wanted to only do girl girl porn and yeah. i just kind of fell into doing boy girl and everything else but i like how that's worked out but yeah i really like doing girl girl scenes like um i do a lot of webcamming and stuff mm -hmm. yeah i just do it all basically yeah when you started doing boy girl scenes, what was the first scene? I think it was the second scene I ever did. Maybe the second or third. It was for kink.com. Uh, it was Kink University, and it was like an instructional porn mm -hmm. on how to use um, suction devices. Okay, yeah. So I had like suction things attached to like my tits and my pussy, and the dude like pumped his dick up. And then I think the next one I did after that was just a gangbang. So I just went like zero to a <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's so, like, why not? <laughs> yeah, you dive right in. Mm -hmm. Had you had sex with guys before that? Yeah, like I, I had sex with dudes like off camera and I had like one boyfriend, but I didn't really, I just thought I was kind of doing it because it was like, it's a lot easier to like get with dudes than it is to get with girls. Oh, like, is it? Okay. It was just like, a, I thought it was just a situational thing. Like, I had done anal and stuff with a dude just, like, to try it. Yeah. That was, like, the second time I had sex because I was like, well, I didn't like it this way the first time. Maybe this whole is better. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you, did you like the anal better than the, uh, with the guy? That, oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's always been a favorite. I just uh, recently had my first uh, receiving uh, situation. So Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it was wonderful. It was great. And very smooth and easy. There was no real prep either, which it's was great. <laughs> yeah, you, I, you don't always have to prep. Like people ask me like, Oh, my boyfriend wants to put in my ass or my girlfriend wants to fuck my ass or whatever. What do I do? And it's like, honestly, like if you're just in the mood, like put a towel down or yeah, turn, down. Yes. turn the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> you find you're not as squeamish. Totally. Is, uh, yeah, yeah. Certain things have happened before, you know. Uh, someone got very, very aggressive with their hand, and I was like into it. I was like, "This is cool." The uh, it, it wasn't the right time, but you know, you're like, yeah. "Whatever." You can wash your hands. Well, you know, and... it comes with the territory. You can't go in there like expecting everything to be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be so delicate. Exactly. <laughs> before you were with Lance, what was the longest uh, relationship that you had? Uh, I think the longest one it was like nine months. Not very good at relationships. <laughs> this is the longest one I've been in. We've been together about three, almost four years, I think. Well, congratulations. That's Thanks. great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I when I met uh, Lance, I was um, living with a woman. And then before that, I had like a boyfriend for like a really brief time. But it mm -hmm. was like a rebound situation. Oh, sure. Yeah. Before that, it was like a nine month, but it was long distance. So it was like really low commitment. I'm perfect. Yeah. So I was, I had to kind of, when I met him, I had to learn how to be sober and be in a relationship that lasted longer than nine months. Yeah. So was, right. There's a lot. Yeah. And so like when I hit the nine month mark, I was like waiting for him to like break up with me or something. Or, <laughs> Hiding calendars. And yeah. Stuff. I was like something. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, okay, something's going to happen. And then like nothing happened. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, we're still together. So yeah, things, things were good. Do you uh, ever suffer from anxiety? Yeah. Not so much anymore. I, I meditate a lot. Oh, cool. Um, when did you start doing that? Um, when I, when I got sober, well, I was meditating before, like in therapy and stuff, but mm -hmm. therapy is like a lot more effective when you're sober because it's easier to be honest. Yeah, sure. I yeah, can imagine. Um, but yeah, 
meditation helps a lot. It also helps, like I have less panic attacks and um, haven't had one in a long time, actually. It just kind of stop, stops them before they start. It also helps with anal. Like I tell people all the time, like, like fucking meditate. Like it relaxes your mind, all your muscles relax and everything's like so much easier. It works for every aspect of your life. Do you direct scenes as well? Sometimes, like if I'm shooting for myself, um, like my own clip sites or whatever, yeah. then, and also sometimes like when I'm on set, like I, I get to have a lot of creative input, yeah. um, especially lately. So that's been really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually I'd like to direct like my own feature or something, but I want to just do it for myself and like fund it by myself. Sure. Then have complete control and yeah, no concern yeah, over that. I don't want to have to get a budget from anybody or like answer to oh i need this much for location like i just want to do what i want are certain scenes required when there's like a budget from coming from someone else like we need this this and this yeah like if you're working for a company they're like okay now we need a squirting movie mm -hmm. and oftentimes they'll give you a list of like who you can hire and i hear that all the time like a lot of my friends are directors and they're like dude i want to hire you but like you're not on the list i got from the boss yeah i'm like that fucking sucks but whatever <laughs> there's a lot of restrictions sometimes right yeah in porn. lance is kind of uh an anomaly in that he does both gay and straight mm -hmm. porn and right? everything in between yes right that's mm -hmm. right but that's not that common because there's still some phobias that people have about oh yeah people don't understand how science works <laughs> um, uh, which is really sad, but it, it's true. But um, I think because he's so out there and like unapologetic about who he is and what he does. Sure. I've noticed like a lot of the stigma is breaking down a bit. There's been more and more like by performers like getting into the industry and doing their own thing mm -hmm. or shooting their own by content or right. crossing over to the industry. Sure. And it's, it's less of a problem now. So I hope like if we just normalize shit, it it'll get um more accepted yeah i'm sure in like 10 years it'll be a totally different situation hopefully anyway i hope so yeah i love your twitter feed and there was a few Thank that you. oh yeah it's so good <laughs> i'm gonna have to pull up a couple of them because again i would send them to katya I'd take screen grabs that's very nice of you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. I may even have a folder on my phone of some of them, uh, if I can find my phone. And so I've misplaced the camera and my phone. Is that it over there? Oh, it is. Yeah. The, where I was charging it. I think I have just a, like a certain amount of brain capacity. And then after that walk from the gated community, I uh, lost yeah. it. I only have two brain cells and <laughs> occasionally they bounce into each other. <laughs> and does that help or hurt? That's the question, right? It hurts really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good you got sober because you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, you could really... I'm working on regrowing them. It's been taking a while. <laughs> well, you like science stuff, right? I do. And you like um, numbers. You're into accounting. Yeah, I thought porn was just going to be a way for me to pay for my degree mm -hmm. and then i really liked doing porn and i didn't want to go back to school <laughs> and um, get like my master's and be a cpa and stuff maybe i'll go back into that but i really like making my own hours and like yeah. being able to take vacations and stuff and i just like being self-employed it feels good and you also handle your own taxes and all that stuff though still with the yeah, what you yeah it's so much easier that way i don't like paying people to do stuff i can do myself mm -hmm. have you ever thought of uh, doing some kind of thing where you're the person that helps other porn performers to I manage thought about that? that that was originally my goal yeah. um and right when i was getting into webcamming and stuff i was doing taxes for other cam girls but i i love working with people but I don't really like working with people, if that makes sense. <laughs> and, um, you like the concept? Or yeah, and, st and stuff that is so, like, uh, common sense to me. Like, you're self-employed. Save, like, at least, like, a third of what you make for taxes and yeah. incidentals and stuff. I would do taxes for people, um, like, other cam girls and stuff. And they're like, well, why do I owe this much? Like, I thought you were getting me a refund. It's like... Yeah, if you work like a W two job, you get a refund. But girl, you made like a thousand dollars like a day, like yeah. sticking dildos in your ass. Like the government wants like money from that. Yeah, they definitely do. They yeah, definitely like, do. Yeah. Like my free cams or whatever, they don't like withhold your taxes for you. <laughs> They're not looking out for this no, stuff. No. No. Hi, I'm Pia Zadora, and I have one question for you. Are you gay? Because I just always like to know that ahead of time. What was the first piss-based scenario? You know, the first one I did, I got waterboarded with piss. 
Again, jumping right into the defense. Just deep jumping end. right into yeah. it. Well, um, I was shooting for Asylum and the producer, he's like, okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring you out here in like a couple months. We have time to plan stuff. Is there anything you want to do? I'm like, well, you know, I've always been wanted to be waterboarded, but I feel like that's like entry level. Uh-huh. I'm like, I like pee. Why not just waterboard me with pee? <laughs> um, so I've never actually been waterboarded with water. It's just been just bodily pee. fluids. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And it really does feel like you're drowning, but I'm, I'm glad I tried it once. So like, I know what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then you can, yeah. you can say that I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, some, some stuff like you don't need to try again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad I did. And then I don't think that is available on the internet anymore. I think he removed it because he was afraid of being arrested for like obscenity charges. Oh, okay. Now, um, that still goes on, right? Yeah. So I guess the loophole is you shoot something really obscene, but it has like a political or educational value. Oh, okay. That's kind of more like of a documentary, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, right, um, right. So what we do now for a lot of stuff is we'll have like a dialogue before or afterwards where we talk about stuff oh, like, like, and then, the, like the kink oh, yeah. interviews and stuff. Yeah. Th- those are cool. And then, um, for asylum, like we kind of wax philosophic and then throw some politics in there and then we're like, okay, I think we got enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. So, sometimes you see clips where they have a big intro with, it's like, it's a, um, by threesome, but they're not really doing the kink thing. They're just talking and saying their names. I remember seeing one and going like, I don't know what's going on here. This is like five minutes of nonsense. And yeah, like I've been on sets where like they, they interview you before, but it's like not a sexy thing. Like at least for kink, I think because like I've shot with all the directors so many times, it's yeah. like, oh, I'm just talking to a friend and then I'm I'm talking about the stuff I'm excited about doing. And then afterwards right. we're reminiscing on the exciting things we did. It's like very horny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And mostly you're nude, right? While you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. I like to be at least. (laughs) (laughs) You want to be comfortable. Yeah. But they make me take like my, my ropes off. They're like, no, you can't be tied up in the interview. They'll think we're holding you against your will. You like like to be held against your will in in the right circumstance, right? Yeah. In the right circumstances. Like I don't always like being tied up. Like some people are super fetishy about like, restraints and uh, that oh yeah like do the tie this jute knot on me i don't know yeah uh-huh. um, yeah yeah i'm like i don't know if it's the right person doing it i'm cool but like it, it feels like rough and it's like splintery and you get like little rope fibers everywhere oh, okay yeah you can get a rope burn yeah that doesn't sound terrifically no. fun yeah i remember cherry saying something about like having like kind of a dead arm for yeah, like a week. you can get a dead arm. It's not always the most comfortable. It's not supposed to be comfortable. Well, that's true too, mm-hmm. right? How much of uh, when you're in a bondage situation, uh, are you enjoying not enjoying it? Or are you just enjoying it? It depends. And it depends who I'm working for. Like nowadays, I'm really picky with who I do bondage type scenarios for. Sure. Like pretty much only for kink because I trust everybody there. Like, yeah. I think it was last summer I was in a hip suspension with um, a rope around my neck with a bowling ball hanging from it. Oh, wow. So and wait, like, uh, so to, just to break that down, so a hip suspension would be that the primary suspension is just around your hips. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of falling or leaning backwards okay. and then I'm um, with a rope attached to my neck like with the bowling ball hanging from it. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're doing, that could very easily kill somebody. Yeah. But um, like this director... Um, jp the pope we call him like i trust him with my life so i'm like of course you can do this stuff to me and it's very freeing to allow yourself to be a bit scared but it's also comforting like i know it'll get to like 99 but it'll never get to like 100 where it's dangerous so sure just letting somebody else take care of you and take care of the situation and trusting like them and it's it takes a lot to get to that point but like if you can it's it's super uh, invigorating. I like that a lot. So is that a big uh, aspect of BDSM? Yeah, find? like giving up control. Um, but also what's really interesting is the sub is pretty much always in control. They can, or they should be able to, stop the scene at any <laughs> yeah, time. They and, I think they should be able to. I'll go with yeah, you on that. Yeah, and um, you have like your list of things you're not okay with. And I have a list of things that... I don't like doing, but I like to be threatened with. Really? Like the cattle prod, like... I've cattle prodded myself and it doesn't bother me, but for some reason, the idea of somebody else cattle prodding me, it scares me. Um, sure. But 
so like JP, he knows I'm terrified of the cattle prod. He'll turn it on get it really close to me. And I start crying, even though I know like in my head, like never in a million years, is he actually going to cattle prod me? <laughs> yeah. He's like, Oh, I'm going to cattle prod your pussy. I'm like, no, please don't. <laughs> and then I just start crying. And then like, I'm so scared. It makes me really horny. And then I come really easily. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like the camera stopped rolling and I'm like, that was so fun. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just like kind of, I feel like very lucky I can like pop into it and pop back out of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it's really cool. So it's like the thrill of a horror movie type of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like you're watching the movie. You like allow yourself to be scared. You know, like the monster is not going to come through your TV and get you, but like you're right. still suspending disbelief for that moment and allowing yourself to get to that mental plane. When was the first time that you discovered that sort of thing? Was it in a scene or was it in personal play? Um, I had done some stuff like with uh, partners before getting into the industry, but neither of us are very experienced. Mm -hmm. um, and what kind of stuff? Just like um, restraints or? Um, just like heavy play, like um, like getting slapped around a bit and mm -hmm. like getting my ass fisted and stuff. But my first like foray into like being tied up and like doing everything like super properly like was in porn mm -hmm. and i i feel like really blessed for that like everything yeah. has always been like pretty safe yeah and with kink right it seems like that was you started yeah, you started I love yeah them. they like raised me basically uh -huh. they're like my family at this point i love that every story i've heard about kink.com is basically so similar yeah yeah they have like the most like outstanding reputation and um, since like my second scene ever was for them and mm -hmm. I pretty much always shot for them like yeah. my whole career, I kind of hold every set to their standard of sure how models should be treated and how things should be conducted. So I think like if I started out doing like really shitty stuff, <laughs> like I would just expect like garbage from everybody. Right. Like, oh, this is how it should be. But right. um, we were supposed to suffer and, uh, yeah. Yeah. But since, um, I know like, okay, I don't have to stand for this. I have rights. Um, I, I felt like I was able to assert myself more mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, I had a lot more like protection and confidence, like going into situations and knowing like, okay, this isn't normal. I can say no to this or I can walk sure. away. But not everybody has that experience. It can be really hard to speak up. And a lot of people do have that fear of speaking mm -hmm. up. Uh, I saw you post something uh, that I can't quote offhand but about the importance of advocating for yourself in, in situations uh, yeah. like this. It, it's very important. And, uh, you know, I understand it's a fine line. Like, you, uh, like, there's been times I've done stuff I wasn't exactly, like, keen on doing when I needed to pay rent and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can be afraid to advocate for yourself because you're worried that you're going to get branded as a diva. Like sure. this director is going to tell all these people that I'm like difficult to work with. I'm high maintenance. Yeah. I'm fussy or I'm not going to get paid or something or right. things are going to get worse for me because I've complained. Like you don't really know. But yeah, it's better in the long run to just like not put up with bullshit because yeah. then people realize like oh i can't like make other models put up with bullshit right that's right yeah we set a standard for everyone else that way mm -hmm. it, like you call them out if it's a bully or whatever you call them out and then they're less likely to just do it so easily totally were you ever on a set where there was some stuff going on some bullshit and then you had to sort of call a stop to it I mean, it sounds like you've mostly worked with great people like kink etc but yeah, I've I've had to stop some scenes before and then like mm -hmm. had to talk with like the crew and stuff and I'm like, okay, I'll proceed like under these conditions and uh I've had stuff happen like right uh one time like something really bad happened like right before a scene mm -hmm. but we had shot all this other stuff, like many days of dialogue like before the actual scene. So I felt like I'm really fucking over the production, like if I <sighs> just cancel this scene they have to reshoot all this stuff and it's going to cost them a bunch of money so it was like yeah. between a rock and a hard place sure so i was like okay i'll get through this scene and then i'll tell the director and everybody afterwards and then everything was like okay it was just i was kind of miserable yeah yeah but you figured for the yeah greater good and yeah and then they would really maybe brand you as something if you oh totally yeah. what was dating like before you were with lance because two performers being together it's a wonderful thing i imagine mm -hmm. and you have an understanding with each other that is uh maybe not as common as it, it should be mm -hmm. with people uh dating porn performers did you ever have any issues with 
people you were with before? Yeah, a bit. So right before I was dating Lance, I was dating um, another actress and things were great with her. It just we didn't work out. Uh-huh. Um, then before her, the last couple people I dated were cool at first and then very jealous and okay. didn't have a problem with me spending like my sex work money on them to buy them shit. But uh-huh. they had a problem with how I was making the money okay, or sure. didn't want me to do certain things, didn't want me to like flirt with people on my social media where I kind of have to be flirty on social media. Like (laughs) it's weird. Like it's Twitter and Instagram and everything. It's become so important with porn because you have to create this persona and make people think you're horny all the time. Yeah. I'm horny like a lot, but not all the time. (laughs) Like I'm going to Ikea later. It'd be, really (laughs) it'd be really inappropriate to be horny there. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I was interested in getting into porn for like, Uh, I got in when I was 20 and I think uh, a few years before that I started like considering it as like a a fun like life path to take yeah and uh, I would tell this to my partners like oh I think I want to start webcamming or I'd like to do scenes like sure I love watching this performer she seems like she's having a lot of fun well I'd be jealous like if other people were jerking off to you and it's like if you have like a picture of your face on Facebook, like somebody's jerked off to you, like it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, I don't know. None of that shit matters to me. Uh, but so I felt like I couldn't explore stuff as soon as I wanted, but sure. I think if I would have gotten into porn, like right when I was 18, I would have made even poorer decisions than I already (laughs) had. I'm glad I went to college a little bit first. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sometimes things just happen the way that they're supposed to happen at the time. They're supposed to happen too. Although it is funny, uh, the people's hangups about this idea of what might happen. It's more that fear thing. Mm -hmm. Um, It makes me think of the situation where, you know, me or maybe it's someone else was cheated on in an emotional sense. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the concept of not being monogamous, which is how I'm currently living my life, is much more sensible because you're like, why? Yeah. I I don't know. I've tried monogamy loads of times and... It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Like, uh, hey, listen, booze doesn't work for some people. Yeah. Monogamy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, just cause they're popular. <laughs> totally. And I, I've, I've noticed like that becoming more of a socially acceptable thing. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Me too. Um, yeah. and it just makes things so much easier when you're doing porn. Like, of course, like you're going to be like attracted to other people. Like it, I wouldn't be doing porn if I wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, it's I, not I, like I'm only attracted to my husband, but I go there and I'll just get through it. Like, how yeah, are you going to... Yeah, no, that's a miserable way to live. And, right. like, I'm, I'm not attracted to everybody I work with, but I really enjoy having sex. Right. Um, I love my job. Yeah. So... And everyone should love their job. Yeah, it, it would be silly to, like, deprive myself of that joy. And I think a lot of people are held off from that just because of this notion that things could go wrong. Yeah, and I find like if you're trying to keep your partner from doing stuff, it, it comes from a place, not all the time, but a lot of times from jealousy and insecurity and you want to have agency over that person. Yeah, that's true. Um, at yeah. least like every time I've wanted somebody to be like completely devoted to me, it's because I wanted to control them. It wasn't <laughs> because like, uh, and my feelings were getting hurt, but that's because I'm an insecure person. So. <laughs> but um there's so, nothing there's nothing wrong with like being jealous you just got to work through it yeah that's true and a lot of times people make the mistake thinking that other people's emotions are their job well, yeah, right because that's totally. almost codependency mm-hmm. which is an easy thing for all of us to fall into because a lot of us get the notion either sold to us or we buy into it depending on who's whoever wants to take the culpability that we are solely responsible for someone else's feelings yeah and we're not and it's a lot of responsibility to ask of somebody and it's also a lot of responsibility to expect one person to fulfill all your emotional and sexual desires yeah it's like you have different types of friends like you have one (laughs) friend you go bike riding with you have one friend you go to the movies with like it can be the same like in a romantic and sexual sense yeah it definitely can Mm -hmm. yeah and kind of should i mean i'm sort of new to the whole idea in the last two years and new to a couple things (laughs) Mm -hmm. you're never never too late to grow no no, exactly exactly right but it's been really good it's funny because you mentioned that thing before about uh realizing you were bi or whatever like Mm -hmm. later on i was a little later but it was uh it's good you know it's a good thing it's a bit fun yeah it's a lot of fun yeah uh what was uh childhood like for you Oh, it was not that great. (laughs) 
Now, we can talk more about it or not, depending on... Uh, we could touch on a little bit. So there's this stereotype of, you know, all porn performers and sex workers, we come from broken homes and we're like vi- victims of abuse and stuff, or we were diddled as kids. Sure, so that's yeah. why we get like getting diddles, diddled as adults. Yeah. Um, and like, I had like my fair share of abuse and stuff. Like I, uh, grew up with a very alcoholic, violent mother. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that's might be where I get my alcoholism from or could be genetic. It could be not. Um, right. I know it, it, yeah, so, it, it's hard to d- determine that stuff, but it certainly doesn't help. Yeah. You know? So I, I grew up, uh, I was in foster care for a bit and, um, I, I was kicked out of my first high school and the things were tough, but, um, I don't want to let that define me. Like I, I've seen people who they kind of base their identity around that Yeah. and have like a victim mentality, but I've done like so much like hardcore, like EMDR therapy and all this stuff to get past my PTSD and I feel like it's made me like a lot stronger as a person and yeah it kind of forced me to mature as a kid like really fast that might be why I have such a fetish for old men today I don't know uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that could be yeah yeah now, now how old do you like old men when you say old men <sighs> at least 50 my husband's <laughs> my husband's 40 and I'm, I'm just waiting <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're like don't dye your hair if you're getting it like yeah. A, yeah well like I think that was another reason I didn't really like guys when i was younger because i was in high school and like teenage boys are gross (laughs) like the teachers were like handsome but they're all like married oh Um, right right and that's gross and i was like underage and stuff um i didn't really like have any i i was always watching like a ton of porn and like putting things in my ass like but i never like i didn't have my first kiss until i was like 16 it was funny like we ended up not dating or anything but she was like very nice and then like a year later i tried the sex thing and i'm yeah. like i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> and i tried it with a girl i'm like okay this is better yeah and then like i tried it in my ass i'm like okay i think this is <laughs> i think we found the i think uh, we're getting close yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. i think uh, all those things that you talked about even you're touching on in childhood you know you you have a very serene presence oh, thank you you're welcome and you seem very uh zen's not the right word but i don't know a better one for it so i'm gonna go with zen thank you're welcome present and i guess serene yeah i'm gonna go back to serene and so it's nice to see that knowing that there was some not so fun times and some trouble times you know what i mean yeah it's definitely taken some time to get to this place like i feel like i'm really calm like i was saying before like i don't get angry really yeah Uh, but i used to be such a frank frazzled like anxious like ball of nerves and i was just a nervous wreck all the time sure freaking out like crying all the time and yeah the slightest um, thing would set you off and yeah now that i just kind of let things like run off my back like water and not a lot of stuff really bothers me it's a much more peaceful way to live yeah definitely i mean i still struggle with anxiety from time to time i get these little fugues like a three-day thing or 12 hours but i was telling a friend the other day who after i was talking through one of them with and i was like but the thing is it used to be like three to seven days now it's like a 12 hour yeah it gets easier know, it gets easier yeah mm-hmm. and i just i considered them like mental head colds you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to look at it because it, it yeah. is like a, a bit of an illness i think we should treat it just like we treat like the cold like it's it's very normalized i think so too there's ways we can attack it there are and also being candid with your friends and being like i'm really fucked up today or like i'm really not having a good one yeah. is like a good way to do it because it's, it's very easy to say i'm doing good things are great yeah yeah but then like you know your friends who hear that from you all the time they're like well, I must not be normal because I have bad days sometimes. <laughs> well, like, that's the other thing. The more my that we, friend over here yeah. never has a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Like the more we talk about this stuff, it's one of the things I love talking about on the show about you know having bad times and everything because we all do. And like the more we talk about it, the better it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I found it better for me and all that. What's your favorite like garbage food? I love like anything chocolatey. Before the taping, yeah, you right said... before the tape, I had a bunch of chocolate ice cream <laughs> with brownies on top in a bowl uh, that was like a waffle bowl dipped in chocolate and sprinkles. That's fantastic, um, yeah. And I love like anything cheesy and carby. Like I had mac and cheese last night. I had three dinners yesterday. Oh, good for you! I had um Chinese food, then I had sushi, and then I had mac and cheese. And that sounds heavenly, by the way. Yeah, it was a good day, and uh, I love pizza. Yeah. What kind of pizza? Do you have a special favorite? Um, I love like New York style pizza. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really like a whole lot of meat on it, but oh, I like yeah, yeah. Um, 
I like cheese. I like pineapple sometimes. Like, uh-huh. Don't shoot me. Some people no, are very angry about that. I know. People flip out about pineapple. I'm like, listen, Hawaiian pizza is fantastic. But you know, the, the people who like pineapple, we're nonviolent. We don't attack people for their pizza choices. Yeah. You know what? You're right. <laughs> we're very tolerant. Yeah. And like, hey, like, do what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean you don't like pineapple on your pizza? Like, nobody says that. No. Right. It's ridiculous. People who have said that before, eh, slight issue with them. Yeah. Brian might have said that. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it, people get very parochial about certain things um hot dogs you can only have mustard or i'm like whatever the fuck you want on the thing yeah exactly like, right mayo whatever you want yeah yeah i don't care i don't care it doesn't bother me <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I don't affect have, my life if i don't have to eat it no, i don't really care what's right. on your thing yeah that's how i feel about people's kinks too as long as you're not hurting <laughs> anybody like yeah people get so pissed off they do what are some of the ones that people flip out about oh people get so mad at me about the pee thing like really like, you're gonna get sick and it's like you only get sick if you drink too much <laughs> how much is too much pee oh you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't quantify it but you, you feel you it just know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like uh, like one dude he had subscribed to my only fans i have yeah. an only fans page right what's what's point. the address by the way we'll it's onlyfans.com slash goth charlotte and for 12.99 you can watch videos of me taking giant dicks in my bed drinking pee or just like hanging out i do a lot of public nudity stuff so i post like that stuff oh cool it's it's like an, a naked patreon i love that yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's fun but this dude like he was so angry that he paid like twelve ninety nine, and I have like hun- a couple hundred videos on there at least, like of me doing other stuff. It's like if you don't like the P one, like scroll down. Like yeah, the one underneath is me sucking a dick. The one <laughs> underneath that is like me getting like fucked. Like just choose your flavor like i right. posted it in the caption like you chose to click on it but he's like you're so disgusting blah 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 and it's like i literally have like urinal tattooed on my inner lip like don't act surprised <laughs> when i drink a little piss piss yeah i i'm stunned that he would be surprised because you have to go through a couple steps to sign up for your own yeah fans. it's like you must be new here yeah right yeah exactly he wasn't yeah he was not well yeah, researched and he kept saying i'm gonna unsubscribe i'm gonna unsubscribe and then he wasn't i think he was still jerking off like of course for a few days he wanted attention it sounds like yeah and so many people do it's it's funny so i, I try not to even respond to that reactionary stuff because people will oftentimes they'll feign like outrage uh-huh. and then they'll be really mean and then as soon as you give them attention they flip the script and are really nice and they love you and everything yeah Yeah. it's it's really peculiar so it's like okay here's the attention you ordered but it's i don't want to give people the satisfaction right and then that becomes a strange cycle too you sometimes have to know when to Mm -hmm. limit the interaction every porn performer gets this but you must get some strange fan approaches at conventions and stuff um Uh i've been like I usually, the last time, like, I brought a bodyguard, like... Oh, that makes sense. Stuff, it's been a lot easier, but people will say really bizarre things to you in person. Sure. Like, it's less of an extent as they say on the internet. Like, (laughs) some of the stuff I read, I'm like, you wouldn't say this if you were standing face-to-face with me, but a lot of people, like, they they don't get quite to that level, but people really pop off at the mouth and okay, it's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Which is jarring. Cause that kind of weirdness yeah. is a bad energy. And like, what's the purpose of that too? It's so, it's so strange. Do you like the conventions? Uh, otherwise though, is it generally I like nice? It, like it, for all the weird people, my really nice fans, um, make it worth it. Like, uh, yeah. at this past exotica, I have one fan. She's really sweet. Um, I hope she's hearing this, but she like, she has me tattooed on her arm oh, nice. and she like brought me like a coyote skull and like a dead like taxidermy duckling and um the first time she met me she like started crying and i'm like oh my god you're so sweet and there's people they're so dedicated and they like see you at every event and they like bring you gifts and they yeah. keep up with your life they're like oh how's like your family like they can watch all your stuff for free but they'll still like buy a dvd to like support you sure. even though it's like becoming an archaic thing <laughs> um so that that kind of stuff like i always have to bring like a a big suitcase because people just give me so much stuff oh and I'm, that's like, lovely yeah but it, it's so sweet to think about like these people traveled like such a long way and they like had to carry like all this stuff with them sure. into the convention and stay right. in line forever and then yeah find you wait in line to see you and then uh, so I just think that's really sweet. It is wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my first uh, experience at DragCon. 
uh, last year, and now I'm going to be doing the one in London and uh, oh, LA. Fun. I'm really excited. I'm doing a panel with Sophie Anderson. I'm so excited. I'm such a fan of her. Her videos are so fucking funny. They're so great, aren't they? She's like, I'm on my way to lick some pussy. Yeah. <laughs> just driving in the car. <laughs> Today's latest photo, either on Insta or Twitter, it just said Lickens. It was like her in some lady's lap. It, mm-hmm. And I was like, she's the best. She's the best. I love that. She just doesn't give a fuck. No, she doesn't. And she's such a, like a ball of light too mm-hmm. i'm hoping that she comes to la sometime soon i want to meet her I'm oh yeah fan. you two would get along great you two should come to uh, drag con if you have the i time would love to. to go yeah i like i've heard some of the lines are long but I, I feel like i'd have to pick like one or two people i really want to meet and then yeah. just devote that but there's some people i'm like would just flip out over meeting so that would be really cool and i don't know what the, my panel situation is on the la one but if they're open to doing something about porn and you guys are here or, you know, something like that mm-hmm. here. I say here cause I'm out of my mind. I don't remember that I'm not <laughs> in Los Angeles. Um, I was so confused when I was at the Tammy Brown Gala because I was traveling so much mm-hmm. that someone was looking for weed and I go, I'm sure one of our friends has some from, and they go, yeah, we're in California. We can, I was like, right. Long beach. We're in long beach. I, <laughs> I, I was like, I have a suitcase with me. So I think I'm overseas, mm-hmm. but anyway, yeah, we'll talk more about that. So the, the fans, are really incredible and i had a hot dog club meetup in london which was great and some of the gifts were just unbelievable the cards the, yeah people are so nice yeah they're wonderful i saw this interesting thing i saw a panel with whitney cummings and paul Shear, and they were talking about how in today's sort of media landscape people either know what you had for lunch or they have no idea who you are yeah nothing in between yeah exactly yeah yeah and uh, you really have to put yourself out on social media like Um, I have such a love hate relationship with it because I I don't want to curate my persona or like my brand. I don't really have a brand. Like it's just me doing porn. It's like an (laughs) extension of like the sluttier parts of me. Mm -hmm. And then I put like my hobbies and stuff out there. But But I think that that helps to, uh, solidify the brand actually because of the name Goss Charlotte as well. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but, uh, the, uh, but also because you put your interests out there, I I find that even like with the show, me at the beginning starting to talk about movies and, and all that stuff, it sort of like did its own, uh, curation, if you will. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's just, it's just so much harder to pretend to be somebody else you might as well just be yourself and the people i've noticed who are so uh preoccupied with making this persona and creating this personality instead of just having their own personality and like displaying their genuine interests they don't do as well as the people who are just (laughs) being real but um yeah with the social media it's crazy because um I go to work, I try to put my phone down and yeah. not be on my phone all day because yeah. it's unprofessional and I get distracted and the day drags on. Sure. But if you're not like taking selfies, like, oh, I'm working with this person today. Right. People ask me, like, if I don't post for a few days, they're like, hey, are you retired? <laughs> and it's, it's true. Like, it's like, no, like I have, I work like all the time. Like sometimes like there'll be stretches in like busier months where I'm working like every single day. And if it's not for another company it's for myself like i yeah i always stay busy or i'm editing or doing something um but yeah it's tough and then twitter is like linkedin for porn so i don't have an agent and i much prefer it that way because you've had bad times with agents in in the early days right yeah i had an agent for like maybe a week or so and it was just i don't want to get into it but okay sure yeah they're they're terrible it's like glorified pimp um (laughs) But, I think you had a great quote. It's just another person getting in between you and your money. Right. Like I always say, like, if he, you're sucking a hundred percent of the dick, so why would you give them 10 or 15% of the money? They're not even holding your hair back or anything. <laughs> They're not doing shit. Like it, it, it's a, a brain dead monkey could answer the phone, send an email and manage a Google calendar. Yeah. And wake up in time to go to work. And that's really all you have to do. Right, right. That's true. And another mm-hmm. aspect that I like that uh, that's making me think of is how hands-on and uh, one-man band being a porn performer is. Mm-hmm. You mentioned doing the editing. And I know Lance does. He's editing right now. Yeah. And so you shoot and um, do everything. What What's the shoot look like when you're doing one of your own shoots? Like, do you have a camera person? Are you doing the camera or what are the variants of that? Oh, it depends. Like, um, I hold camera for my friends a lot. I just mm-hmm. like doing it. Um, it just depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing like only fan stuff, sometimes I'll have a friend 
like I'll hire them to hold camera or sometimes we'll just, the phones are getting so sophisticated now. You right. can just set it up on a tripod or. Sure. Like we were talking about before the new things like yeah. the Osmo pocket. That's the mm -hmm. camera that I yeah, was talking the about. Osmo yeah. Pocket. I shot a scene uh, on one of those recently. They're, They're wild. Great. They're yeah. so cool. Um, but yeah, so what's been really interesting to see is how the landscape of porn has changed with so much of the technology everything is becoming so much more accessible for the average person yeah. like um cam girls and content creators like they don't have to leave the house and they make a lot more money than some of us sure oh i want to work with this person you don't have to wait to get booked with them you can message them on twitter <laughs> and ask hey do you want to shoot only fans and yeah. you go to their house and you fuck them and you film it on your phone and then you both put them videos on your only fans and you both make money it's great yeah it's so much uh easier and you can wear whatever you want you don't have to say stupid lines if you don't want to <laughs> right. or if you're yeah. like doing your own like you can write your own script and like all the editing software like there's oh, yeah. tutorials there's all kinds of yeah. stuff like we can do everything ourselves and there's no excuse not to and not sure to own your own content yeah because we don't get residuals when we do scenes like you, get, <laughs> right. you get one check but yeah um the only fans is great like i wake up in the morning and i check my bank and there's money in it that i <laughs> got when i was sleeping from like an anal scene i did like a year ago like people are still watching stuff so it's, it's really cool it's great it's very parallel with podcasting mm -hmm. and patreon stuff I'm always happy to hear that. I always like when people control the means of production. Yeah. Seize the means of production. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Are you big into philosophy because of the name Sartre or, Sar or Sartre? Which you'd like to say both of them, right? I go back and forth to confuse people. <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> it's... Um, so I, I wanted... I do like reading philosophy. I'm not like a philosophy nerd by uh -huh. any means. Like I have a casual interest in it. Um, but I love reading. Like, yeah. I love like all kinds of literature and stuff and um sorry isn't even like my favorite but um it just fit like I, I I kind of had this I didn't expect like my porn to really like pan out long term so I wanted to pick like a douchey like kind of pretentious name <laughs> and um so I'm like a big fan of Sasha Gray and um oh, she yeah. got her last name from the picture of Dorian Gray oh right yeah so she is a bit into existentialism and she took a selfie with this book called like um existentialism from Dostoevsky to start and um guys on like 4chan and shit they always rip her to shreds like look at this pseudo intellectual whore like you think you can read a book and suck a dick at the same time <laughs> but you're like creating this buzz around her so people are like curious and they look her up and they're like yeah wow she can take a dick she's <laughs> super hot so I just kind of expected that to happen and it totally fucking worked Yeah, yeah. because people are fucking stupid <laughs> and there's like people just hate women and like hate women having an interest in things like, like a guy can have like a casual interest and like, I'm just speaking in generalities. Yeah. I'm not trying to be like misandrist or anything, but like a dude can have like a casual interest in like video games like i was playing skyrim like when you <laughs> knocked on the door <laughs> but like if i post about having like an interest in video games people are like oh well you're not a real gamer or whatever and it's like i don't claim to be your like I what post kind of about aspiration is that by the way you right know? Yeah. yeah that's boring or like i post about like oh i read this book and people are like oh well you didn't really understand the concept of that one like like you're not allowed to have a casual like interest in things and just take things at face value and sure. enjoy things for the sake of consuming like a product. Right. Right. Um, but it, I think like with dudes, like that's a lot more accepted, like girls, we have this, um, and like I'm speaking in generality. Well, no, course, this is very but, true. This is very true. But yeah, know? we have this, um, this like magnifying lens like placed on us. So yeah. I just, I thought it would be funny to like <laughs> see like what shit people talk. And of course they did, but then like, um on like the literature like board on 4chan and stuff yeah but then people like it's like some hateful shit with like a hot selfie of me and people are like oh who's that and then they search me on pornhub and then i get ad revenue so it so. fucking works <laughs> how does that work with pornhub because or you porn etc because they're essentially free clips and i know that free clips are a problem in general mm -hmm. right with porn but you do get ad revenue because of the searches yeah so the way i see it like if you can't beat them, join them. Before I really had like a Pornhub presence, uh -huh. people didn't really know about me because 
um, and I'm guilty of this too. Like before I like realize like, Oh, like most people aren't getting paid for their Pornhub videos because yeah. it's stolen content. Like I thought that's just how you consume porn. Sure. Right. It was, yeah. It's like kids who mm-hmm. grew up um, with Spotify have no conception about like buying a record or right, whatever. Right. And like I, my friends who like stream their stuff on Spotify or have their stuff available to stream on Spotify, mm-hmm. they're making like pennies just right. like I am with Pornhub. But um, yeah, you can have some videos that are like, you know, available like for purchase outright. And mm-hmm. then some things uh, where you get paid like per view, but it's like, okay. Such a small percentage. Sure. Like I have maybe, I think I have at the moment like 70,000 subscribers on Pornhub. Like the last video I put up, I think it has like 33,000 views so Mm -hmm. far. This was like went up maybe a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I make like a little under 500 a month on Pornhub. It's not good. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah. I laugh because it's crazy. It's so crazy. But my OnlyFans... I have like about 300 subscribers on there and like at 12.99 per person like it really adds up so it does, it's yeah. great but I would have a lot more money if I solely focused on that but like to have um a presence like you have to have stuff available for sure. free so oh, people absolutely. find you but then um what I've discovered is it's like this with bands too like they'll stream an album on spotify but they'll buy the t-shirt yes yeah, yeah so exactly. people they'll watch me for free on pornhub but then they'll buy the t-shirt to show their friends like i jerk off to her for that's... free on pornhub <laughs> but i bought the t-shirt that's right and you have a uh, one t-shirt right or do you have more i have a couple have i'm a couple? thinking of doing more you should i love the one that's the picture of you uh acting as the ashtray uh thanks that one was I didn't really expect that one to like pop off so hard, Mm -hmm. Uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I was shooting with a friend that day and we were doing all this crazy stuff. We were lighting shit on fire, like stuff that was very like high energy, like high effort. And then at the end of the day, like I was like, oh, I'm so tired. And I was laying in bed. It was with a couple girls. They started smoking cigarettes. I'm like, you can ash that in my mouth if you want. My friend took a picture and then he signed the rights over to me and the rest is history. And then like eight people tattooed that like i saw this on in your insta stories right yeah, yeah like um after that started happening i was like well if people like this um image enough like to get it tattooed on them like maybe people will buy it as a t-shirt and that's like my best selling one wow cool so that's been really cool and yeah i have like a few sales every day when i first like put them out i um i sold like a lot like it was the emails were nonstop. it was really cool yeah it's really interesting to see the things that people are willing to pay for and not willing to pay for. And it's, yeah. it's so important to keep up with trends and social media helps a lot with that. And, um, I think being a young person also helps. Like I'm, I'm in touch with what the young people are buying. <laughs> I enjoy social media and the trends in the same way. I love like taking on phrases that are uh, yeah, common and stuff fun. it's lots of fun mm-hmm. i think it's very much a mindset Do yeah you know absolutely I mean? yeah that you, you can stay with mm-hmm. as long as you go or that old thing about uh what the, you know it's like uh, people like uh, i'm trying to think older comedians who can roll with that not carl reiner i can't remember exactly but he'd be a good one for you, you mm-hmm. i'm sure you're hot for carl reiner right he's well over 50 <laughs> mel brooks i mean yeah yeah and so, i think a lot of dudes like don't really get hot until they're 50 like i remember like growing up all the girls are like oh my god brad pitt is so hot i'm like what do you mean he just looks like a normal man like i i don't have a concept of what men's attractiveness is Uh uh-huh or i don't all the time i think i'm getting better but it's still like a foreign sure okay yeah like i don't know what my taste is but then like he um i just saw that once upon a time in hollywood movie (laughs) and he's like 55 and i'm like why did I not notice Brad Pitt before? He's like very handsome yeah. because he's 55. <laughs> there you go. That's the magic uh, combination of factors. Yeah. So I'm imagining that you like the scene on the roof when he's fixing the antenna. Yeah, but I think um, Tarantino liked that even more than I did. Well, why would that be in the movie? Why would it be in there? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That, there are a lot of feet. A lot of feet in the film. A lot of feet. But I, I think he's become so self-aware of that. Like the, I think that's why he put like the dirty like feet I think so too. And he made the scenes really long, like with the feet in them. Really long. You know, when I was, uh, I watched that movie a couple times in theaters and more of the like horny gasps on the 
during the shirtless Brad Pitt scene yeah. came from men than women. <laughs> you know, I saw it at the at the arc light, and yet it was definitely a split. Uh, yeah, I miss the arc light so much. I used to, well, uh, I would walk over there and see movies all the time. Oh, sure. Did you ever go to the New Beverly? I haven't yet. Okay, when you come to LA, you have to. It's my fa- excuse me. As listeners know, it's my favorite theater, one of my favorite places in the world, and it's Tarantino's. And um, there's still screening Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I want to see it so there good. again. Yeah, I love that movie so much. It's great. Like I didn't like it so much the first time, but the second time I appreciated it more. LA has so many cool uh, movie events. Like I used to go to like. 35 millimeter screenings of things all the time like yeah. the night movies I yeah saw totally baby driver with an a q a by edgar wright before. oh cool and then i saw like a, a 35 millimeter midnight screening of taxi driver and they had um he was a minor character but one of the cab drivers from oh, which movie. one was it peter boyle or um the guy who played doughboy Oh, okay. I know who you mean. I can't remember his yeah. name. Oh, wait. Taxi Driver is your favorite movie, right? One of my favorites. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I, I kind of go back and forth, but I, I love uh, stuff from that era. Me too. Uh, yeah. What about Taxi Driver? Is it that uh, you think mm, sort of I love that it's, it to you? that it's an unreliable narrator. Mm, I love I, that too. Yeah. I love the grittiness and I love how you're not really sure what the ending is, but it, it's so up for interpretation. And, right. Um, it, it's... It's not considered a fantasy movie, but I, I think it is. It's like the, um, like Travis Bickle's hero fantasy. Yeah, right. It's almost a fantasy in a way that, like, not quite like Fight Club, mm-hmm. but there's something in it about alienation and uh, also the male psyche. Yeah, right? I love that. It's like it's more of a, a movie about like his own brain than like what's <laughs> happening around him. Right. Exactly. And also. It's so uncomfortable to watch in those scenes with Sybil Shepherd when it's like yeah. past the point. Oh, oh God. It's... <laughs> He's so awkward. It's so bad. I read somewhere. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I read that De Niro had um, asked her out on a date like in real life and then she turned him down. I don't know if that was before or after oh, okay. yeah. filming, but I'm sure that didn't help. Oh, God, <laughs> no. So, especially because I'm sure he used all of that. As yeah. part of the yeah, mm-hmm. I remember uh, thinking about how the alienation in it is so intense, mm-hmm. and also that whole thing of getting your hours screwed up. Have you ever been like that? Have you ever had been a nocturnal person or? Yeah, like especially coming back from Europe, like um, even when I'm there, it's like really difficult because I I have to wake up so early. And yeah. Then- I'm hanging out with people late at night, so I'm not sleeping at all, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And then I come back home, and then I'm waking up and starting my day at like four in the morning because I'm <laughs> so jet lagged. Yeah. Um, and then getting exhausted midday, and do you take a nap or do you power through? And how do yeah, you do that? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the nap fucks you up, so sometimes it's it's better to power through it. But yeah, and uh, when I was working at a strip club, I had like a nocturnal stripper hours oh sure it's super isolating because the rest yeah. of the world is doing things not at the time you are doing things right and i imagine too just from adrenaline even if there wasn't substances involved the come down from performing until what four in the morning or... oh yeah I, I would usually like you know wrap up around four and then i would be home at like four thirty or five and then like you get a denny's or something and then the sun's coming up and now it's time to go to bed <laughs> yeah well, oh, actually, so weird. to tie it into uh, Taxi Driver, it, I think it's on the album that Travis gives the Civil Shepherd character, mm-hmm. Sunday Morning Coming Down by Chris Christopherson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge Chris Christopherson fan as well. I don't know. Uh, that doesn't really, uh, not that pertinent, but that's the mm-hmm. show. You've heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mentioned uh, taxidermy before, and mm-hmm. you are uh, a taxidermist, right? Yeah. Um, before I got into porn, actually, um I took it up as a hobby and Mm -hmm. it's kind of my dream to someday stop performing as much and just make money off taxidermy but it's a really hard way to make a living and I I wouldn't be able to keep up the same lifestyle (laughs) (laughs) well certainly the hours would be different all Mm -hmm. right um yeah how do you make money from taxidermy I think there's more money in teaching for sure you can like travel around the country and have little workshops and teach people how to do things where it's really easy for you to get the materials. Like say, um, okay, I'm going to teach everybody how to mount a rat or a rabbit, Mm -hmm. something you can, you can order them frozen online at wholesale prices. And then, um, you can host it like, I don't know, in an Airbnb or like a a buddy's house Uh or I'll give you a free lesson if we can use your kitchen table. And then, um, 
just travel around doing that at like two or three hundred bucks a head, mm-hmm. like minus cost of materials. It really adds up. Um, yeah, selling pieces. It's so labor intensive. And, oh, um, yeah. How long would, oh, sorry to cut you off, but how long would it take to do a piece? Well, to do a rabbit, like if you're really paying attention to the details, it can take like five or six hours, sometimes like eight hours. Wow. The pinning takes the longest. Um, and the pinning is to pin it to the surface is, or what is um, that? You just pin it in whatever position you want it to be. Oh, in. I see. Okay. Um, but it, it, there's so many details. Like with a rabbit, you have to tape the ears into the position you want because otherwise when they dry they crinkle oh okay Um, yeah like you have to put pins like in the lips so that the lips and cheeks and everything are positioned Mm -hmm. correctly and in the eyes like you put the fake eyes in and then the eyes like it's if the eyes are fucked up everything looks fucked up (laughs) because just so much of the personality right in the eyes and um it's like a bad painting or something but the eyes are fucked up yeah, yeah they have to be completely symmetrical and anatomically correct and that's so difficult (laughs) yeah (laughs) i can imagine yeah so you could spend like an hour just fucking oh god i gotta put the pin in here (laughs) this um eyelid is two millimeters lower than this one and Mm -hmm. this whole thing's fucked up it gets it's a huge pain in the ass and then yeah if you're like a hunter or something you take let's say i don't know a deer mount to a taxidermist they can be so backed up that it takes like a year for you to get your shit back. Oh, wow. Um, so I think if you're doing pieces, like it's much better to do something like really small yeah, and sell the shit out of them. Something like really like gimmicky, but cute. Uh huh. Um, sure. That always works. Like, um, uh, like, Oh, I'm selling little mice that are dressed up as like leather daddies. Or, I don't know. <laughs> that's just, no, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Right. And like, um, cause that could take like, like a uh, smaller things usually not always but usually take less time to do yeah. so okay i've got something small it's not taking up all the space in my freezer yeah i can ship them out it's cheap to ship them because it's a small thing sure i can crank them out um but yeah I, I think most of the people i've talked to who teach like make more money than people who um are just producing and like if you're teaching one-on-one uh an apprenticeship from a taxidermist it can cost like upwards of twelve thousand dollars oh wow you go to a taxidermy school for like six weeks or something yeah that type of instruction it thousands and thousands of dollars so it's the teachers are making a lot (laughs) they definitely are now you you taught yourself Mm -hmm. Uh, walk me through teaching yourself how to do that um well i took i've taken a couple classes but mostly the internet is great there's a lot of free resources. Um, taxidermy.net is great. Uh-huh. There's so many threads people made. Like, hey, um, like uh, I've always had weird pets. So I had a pet bearded dragon who passed away. And oh. I'm like, I wonder if I could mount her. Mm-hmm. I can show you her afterwards. Yes, She's in that'd my be spider great. Room. Um, can we take a video of you bringing me in the spider room and seeing whether or not I yeah. freak out? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little messy in there. So I'll... I'll You'll pre uh, yeah. a condition and then totally. I, th- I just realized I think I might have left my Osmo pocket in the Uber. Oh no! But at least it wasn't wasn't a taxi. That's good. You and can the guy was back. nice. Yeah, the guy was nice. So I'll call him and I'll I'll figure it out. I'll okay. figure it out. Yeah, because it's, it's got me and Piazzadora joking around on it. I need that, but it, yeah. it'll be fine. I'll sort that out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll help you if you need. Um, oh, thank you. But yeah, so I, w- I was looking on the forum. I just typed in like bearded dragon, and sure enough, somebody's like. Hey, like I hadn't seen any guides on how to do this, so here's how I did my bearded dragon. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh great, like I can buy those types of um, glass eyes from this store, and then yeah. I can get these chemicals and blah blah blah. So a, a lot of stuff is you just figured out yourself. Um, yeah, but it's cool. It's very DIY. Yeah, it's super DIY and very goth. Thank you. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> now, in terms of goth music and goth culture. Uh, well, do you remember first getting into goth stuff? Also, if, mm-hmm. if you want another water, we can pause for a sec or anything. I'm good. I'll probably pee and then get more water. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, ever since I was a kid, like I, I listened to my mom, like used to be a biker. So she was into darker uh, oh, stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what do bikers listen to? I, she listened to David Bowie and like Led Zeppelin and stuff. So it's like that type of biker i don't know yeah well that, um, that makes that, that clarifies for me that's that kind of biker that kind yeah. of biker yeah um but yeah i don't know i think uh when i was like in middle school or something i listened to a lot of emo stuff because that was very popular at the time oh sure yeah 
and then um i don't know i started listening to like bauhaus and christian death and all that and i really liked that yeah did um, you go to any of the bauhaus reunion shows i haven't yet i heard uh, didn't peter murphy have a heart attack he did like a couple months ago yeah he's had a wild few years right he is he <laughs> he converted to islam and started smoking meth i know i know <laughs> that's quite two a package seemingly <laughs> unrelated things but no peter murphy he's gonna make that happen yeah yeah and uh, the thing that always uh, re- uh res- uh, not resonates the thing i always remember remember from that bust is he was in like a subaru uh, which is the last car i'd ever expect peter murphy to be in i know it's so <laughs> it's so ungoth that it is god i know and i think it was like a greenish uh like yeah, yeah. <laughs> bizarre but he's he's still my hero he's really cool <laughs> he's super cool i'm like adamant about living in turkey mm-hmm. and like yeah he's just doing his own thing yeah 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 we're he's much cooler than all of us i think <laughs> <laughs> let him do his, uh, his math whatever yeah exactly. whatever he wants yeah <laughs> <laughs> so bauhaus christian death and uh, anyone else you're a bowie fan as well right love bowie and you know i love i listen to a lot of the typical stuff i love like joy division i mean mm. they're not really goth but um yeah everybody sisters of mercy all that sure. stuff i listen to a lot a lot of black metal currently oh like who um i don't know the genre that well so i'm interested i love, to I love dark throne um everybody likes mayhem everyone's problematic fave is person <laughs> <laughs> no problematic how come well so it's a one-man deal and he murdered um the dude from mayhem oh really and then uh he went to jail for a little bit but it's norway so they don't really punish people (laughs) that severely they put them in like an ikea decorated room (laughs) and they're like here's some synthesizers like you just think about what you did so then um he was like making dungeon synth which is like um it's like medieval sounding synthesizer music yeah it's like a spun off from uh black metal which i listen to a lot of that too i like ambient um instrumental stuff Mm -hmm. um so he gets out and then he's uh become this uh like pretty much basically like a neo-nazi dude and oh wow he had this problematic this youtube channel where he's explaining like super like pseudoscience things like uh you know people from from nordic countries can see better in the dark because of our blue eyes and it's like that's not how eyes work at all um but people are like believing it like oh okay i can see that and it's you know you put something on the internet long enough it oh yeah people believe it but so people are so angry about him being a racist and stuff yeah that they forget he murdered somebody. <laughs> I guess that's a good plan if you want people to forget you murdered someone, right? Get yeah, real just racist. Yeah, just a racist. And it's like neither are acceptable, but what's <laughs> less acceptable? That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I have this shirt. I just got it. I really love it. And it's um it's a picture of Morrissey, who uh-huh. I also love, but is also like Wildly problematic. problematic. Less maybe and less it, problematic than the other guy. A but. picture of Morrissey and then underneath it says my own personal burzum. <laughs> so it's like my sneaky way of saying like I listen to both of these musicians, but I don't want people to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's like hiding in plain sight with mm-hmm. that. That's good. Nick Cave had a um who I also love. Yeah, he's he, great. Um, uh, he had some interesting points to say about this. It's mm-hmm. like when somebody makes music, and I'm like paraphrasing it, he said this a hell of a lot more eloquently. <laughs> He's like, I-, I listen to a song, it becomes like it was made for me. Yeah, right. And it's completely removed from the artist. Right. So I, I think that's such a-, a cool way to look at things. It's like I still watch movies with Kevin Spacey and shit. Yeah, like, no, right. Yeah, it's yeah. you can't just like stop. Well, if you remove like everybody who's ever done something horrible in their lives, like you won't be able to interact with anybody or do anything. No, that's true. Because everything's canceled. This episode is brought to you by patreon.com slash Craig and Friends in cooperation with OnlyFans.com slash Goth Charlotte. Wholesome content for your ears and wholesome content for your eyes. So like we were mentioning Peter Murphy's so goth, he can do stuff that's not goth and it becomes goth. That's yes. how I feel about a lot of the music I listen to. Like, yeah, I love hip hop and R&B. Mm-hmm. Like, I love Usher. I love, um, I love Brother Lin Chung and like Cool Keith and mm-hmm. Three Six Mafia and stuff. And um, I love Whitney Houston, but she's like especially goth because she died. And she had such like a, a crazy 
mix of sorrow and unrequited love. Oh, totally. Like, yeah. uh, it, and more and more of that stuff keeps coming out and it's like, especially heart wrenching, but yeah, that the Gothic subculture is an interesting one because people are such purists and gatekeepers about it. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you can listen to like other stuff and still be goth. Like nobody's really goth anymore. Like the eighties are gone. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. There's no sense of keeping to these strict rules about stuff. It makes stuff so unfun. Yeah. It's not fun. Like to say, okay, this is what I want to be a part of. And this is my personality. These are the things I'm allowed to listen to. Right. And this right. is what I'm allowed to wear. <laughs> yeah. It's very limiting. Mm -hmm. Now, do you ever get any kind of bullshit about that from people? A little bit, but, um, I think once like you stop caring so much, you kind of give off this air of like not caring. Yeah. I um, think that's really true. And a really good point for listeners too, who have maybe some issues about being their full, true expressed self in general. Right. right? And, um, yeah, I get, a uh, people will comment like on my stuff, like, Oh, she's not really goth because I wasn't wearing black in that scene or something. Oh yeah. You had red on. No, oh, not good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's really silly. Like I can be goth like outside of porn. I can't dress like how I really want to dress in the porn because <laughs> I'm hired to do a job. Yeah, right. And the script says this. These are the wardrobe choices they gave me. Sure. And I'm stuck with that. And also like you don't have to like I don't have to be fucking wearing black lipstick like all day every day. <laughs> like that's annoying. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You don't have to just look like I have one look. Yeah. It'd be dull. You know, we were talking about your OnlyFans and you were talking about the more dominant stuff that you do and, mm -hmm. and there's the ball busting and the pegging. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do that. I've moved all that stuff to my clips for sale. I kind of have to divide up the things I do. So when I was putting femdom stuff and fetish stuff on my only fans, I was losing subscribers. Like the guys who oh, wow. want to see me get fucked in the ass don't necessarily want to see me kick a guy in the balls. <laughs> um, yeah. And then um, with the guys who want to see me kick somebody in the balls, they don't want to see me get fucked. My interests intersect all over the place. Right. And I like combining all my fetishes. So it's like with my husband, like I kick him in the balls and then like we fuck and it's like awesome. Yeah. If I made a video of that, like um, I could have like two versions, like they wouldn't be priced the same. But for all intents and purposes in this example, like mm -hmm. I have one version with just the ball busting. And then I have the version with the ball busting and the sex, which seems like a better deal to me and a hotter movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But people don't buy that one. It's weird. And yeah. I think that that also comes with the landscape of Clips for Sale. It's always been a fetish-based site. Right. So if there is sex, it has to be like a super specific kink. And with Femdom, it's such an interesting fetish. I think it's become a vicious cycle. Like guys looking for Femdom porn, a lot of women who do dominatrix type things don't want to do sex on camera or they mm -hmm. won't mix sex into their sessions. Okay. So guys who have an interest in like getting ball busted or whatever, they're looking for this type of porn and there's no sex in it. So the, in their mind, the sex is removed from the fetish completely. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that makes sense. so yeah. they think like, Oh, I, I only like this separately from the sex. And I, I've talked to a lot of dudes like they would, much rather get kicked in the balls than have sex at all. Like it's better than sex for them. But oh, okay. I think that also can be conditioned based on what type what of porn is available. Yeah, right. And there is an interesting, uh, I guess, division of certain types of things in the mm -hmm. femdom stuff. Because if, if I, if I was going to say if you, I'm going to say if I just casually search femdom stuff, because I like pegging, but I don't like the, I don't like, I like more like Lance's videos for pegging. Yeah, me too. And it, yeah. it's so funny and, and that's not my style of domination is to yell at somebody and like be cracking the whip and, and being like a cunty bitch. Like, yeah, like yeah. I like walk and I'm like, Hey, is it okay if I kick you in the balls? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to do that. But because we both like it and it's like, yeah. we're having fun and like, there's a sweetness to it. That's why he's like his sight, sweet femdom. So right, right. I like that. But yeah, like I think people have been conditioned to believe like brutality is a must with femdom because that's all that is available. Right, especially with the pegging. Like yeah. there's this thing as if the guy's supposed to hate it or He's supposed like... to hate it and it's got to be this gigantic strap on and <laughs> they both have to be wearing latex like no matter how slippery or sweaty <laughs> it is underneath yeah. there. Yeah. And uh oh yeah, that he has to be getting whipped the whole time. 
Right. And um, she has to be yelling at him and calling him a slave. And belittling his penis or yeah, yeah. all of that stuff. And it's like, if you like that, that's cool. But like, oh, totally cool. It doesn't but like, always have to be that way. So you get so many guys, they think that's what pegging is. So yeah. they're like, well, I don't want a chick being mean to me. Like I want to put stuff in my ass, but not if it's going to be like that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to have someone to be mean to you to put something in your ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you do a lot of the JOI clips? I've done some of them, but I'm not so good at just talking to the camera. Okay. Um, yeah, when I have to do solo scenes or like solo VR stuff, yeah, it's such a pain in the ass because I don't know what to say. If there's another person there, I can kind of bounce my energy off of them, sure. and improvise, and especially if we were both like talking to each other, like yeah. you, that's how a conversation works. Like yeah. you say one thing, I say another. <laughs> but if I'm just sitting there in front of the camera, so normally if there's another girl there and we both have to talk into the camera i'm like okay okay you say something first and then that'll give me an idea right and you can bounce back and and build on something like that yeah Yeah. but uh yeah just sitting there i know some girls make a killing doing those it's it's just not my thing when i make them they sell but i'd much rather shoot stuff i have a lot of fun with like ball busting or pegging less often Mm -hmm. than grind out the jois i don't really enjoy doing yeah so why bother right yeah yeah and with the ball busting uh how delicate of uh, an operation is that like you mentioned uh if you drink too much pee you can get sick how is there too many taps it depends on the the person Uh like i've worked with guys who are like oh i'm not really into ball busting but then they can take a lot more than they think they can and we're still able to get like a decent amount out of them my husband, he can't go as hard as he used to. He's had like internal bleeding in the past from right. girls who are way too mean to him. Jay West, he's like the champion of ball busting. Uh-huh. I've never met anybody who can take it like him. And he legitimately loves it. Like, I, I don't want to do something to somebody if they hate it. Like, I feel like I'm raping them. There's nothing fun about that. Um, But like uh, with him, he'll like tell you to keep going and he's like i might throw up from getting kicked so hard but i'm really enjoying it wow yeah and like you know he lets himself get to that level but it's all like disgust and agreed upon stuff it's nothing outside of his comfort level it's like with you and the the prod and the 99 not 100 thing yeah but it's like um like afterwards like he's like smiling so much he's like oh thank you like those were perfect kicks like and that makes you feel feel really good like you're doing something and like it seems like painful and horrible and cruel on the outside but it's like this person is in control of what you're doing to them and they're appreciative of what you're doing so that makes me feel good that i'm giving somebody else pleasure sure and again it's a situation like you said before with the sub controlling Mm -hmm. things yeah yeah you do some cuckolding videos too right yeah you know it's not it's not like my favorite fetish like Mm -hmm. i i get the idea behind it Mm -hmm. but in my head i'm like if there's another dude there, why aren't you both fucking me? But I don't, I know some people love to be humiliated and stuff. I find it really hard to humiliate people. I don't like saying mean things. Yeah. Because it hurts my feelings. Sure. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to call your dick small. Because like, I don't think it's that small. I think it's a perfect size. Like, yeah. I would enjoy that. No, please call my dick small. Oh, I, I feel conflicted here. I feel yeah. bad. You're just sitting there watching. No, I like to watch. Oh, uh, but don't you want to put it in my butt or something while he's in my pussy? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. It's like confusing for me. But I do, um, I do do some cuckolding stuff. I just, um, I just did a cuckolding scene like a few days ago, actually. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I was part of like a whole femdom like DVD thing I'm mm-hmm. doing. Um, so that's cool. That's like the first DVD I've done where it's like all, me in every scene and also like me only doing like femdom stuff. So oh, okay. That's, that's cool. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Did you ever escort? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, did that. Do work? I live and breathe? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's cool. So, did that uh, start at the same time as porn or was that beforehand? That was after porn and I was really scared about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for a while, I was working in a legal brothel. But, you know, you keep a hundred percent of the money when you're doing it independently yeah and there's it's a little safer in the legal brothel but it's there's an element of danger anytime you're meeting up with somebody for the first time so i would much rather meet somebody like with a friend there that i trust and they've seen this dude a few times before so it's like they have that rapport and sure 
he's like vouched for and vetted and all that yeah but yeah it's it's great it's it's so cool like i i genuinely genuinely enjoy like um when i've done it before like having like a no pretenses like fun time with somebody yeah and like we go out to dinner or whatever and um we fuck and like have fun and they just like a lot of times these dudes like the sex is like only a small part of it they Mm -hmm. just want to hang out with somebody and like cuddle and like shoot the shit and like connect uh, on an emotional level with like another human being sure and like i think that's such a pure form of interaction we're very well i say we the show is very pro uh Mm -hmm. escorting and sex work in general me too I was actually on a date uh, that Cherry and Sophie had in New Orleans for like a day. I was hanging out and the guy's great. Uh, and he was like, hey, that guy's lots of fun. Anytime he, you want him to come along, like oh, I'll fly awesome. him out. It was super cool. Like I was way into 80s stuff and it was like lots of fun. It that's was so cool. Wasn't it cool? It was really fun. But yeah, I, I hate this, this uh, stereotype and this prejudice against people who sell sex and also people who buy it like this shame around it like right oh, oh this... he had to pay for it that yeah kind of he had to pay for it this is some creepy guy in like who lives in a basement or perhaps he's some cave troll maybe a bridge troll <laughs> <laughs> he lives in a dark place right. and he's got to be he's got to be ugly but he's either rich or he like had to scrape all of his couch change to pay for this. Which, by the way, would have to be a lot of couch change, It would right? be a lot of couch change. Um, or like he must have a bad personality or whatever. But, oh my God, the very first time I saw anybody, I thought it was too good to be true because this dude, um, I met him. This was in um, Paris. Mm-hmm. He flew me out, put me in this like beautiful hotel room. So I got to hang out in Paris, like free vacation in Paris. Pretty good, yeah. And then uh, he's like, okay, I'm coming up at this time. He knocks on the door and I open it and I thought like it was a sting operation or something because <laughs> he was like dropped at a handsome and gorgeous. Yeah. And he was like very smart and like had a cool, cool things to talk about. He had like a massive dick. <laughs> and like, the story just gets better and better, yeah, by and the way. Yeah, he was really good at using it. And like, you know, he just put the money on the table. It was all like up front and we talked for a little bit and, um, but he kind of was like very professional about it he's like oh i'm only gonna stay for this long and i kind of wanted him to stick around i'm like do you want to go again and he's like no I, I gotta be somewhere i'm like okay i felt like a little rejected at that point <laughs> I could, yeah i'm sure yeah but whatever um but he just like didn't want to deal with like dating and wooing people and he had this very like specific type of girl like alt girls that he likes sure and uh i guess with his job he had like a financial type job he had trouble finding those types of girls right the two worlds maybe yeah and yeah. girls who like anal and like you know sometimes you have to take a girl on several dates before you find out if she's into anal or not yeah that's true But with a sex worker like you know right away like you yeah. can talk about it and it's not weird and so like i thought i was going to be arrested or something i'm like there's no way like i just had sex with this really handsome guy the nice and day. he paid me yeah. for it <laughs> So I'm like freaking out. I'm searching my hotel room for like bugs and like microphones and stuff. Come to find out like pretty sure like uh, sex work is like decriminalized at least like in France. Oh, So I wasn't really breaking any laws or at least that's what Google told me. I wasn't sure. (laughs) And I saw that dude like a few times after and like it was always like super cool and easy. And I've had like fucking great times with people like gone to baseball games and stuff. Not to say that like I only like like going on fun excursions that are non-sexual with people because i've had some like really good sex like, yeah yeah um the first time i came from like a guy eating my pussy was like when i was seeing a client who was wow. like really good at it so yeah. i thought i was just broken until i had that experience sure but, so i got a lot out of that it was yeah. really cool that's great yeah do you have this podcast called how come yeah my friend does it and um, oh you know her yeah remy yeah yeah oh, she's that's awesome so cool. yeah remy's great yeah, yeah. I, I love that one I'll, I'll let her know i'll let her know because i think that you'd, you'd be great on it yeah Thanks. you're welcome and she's a lot of fun yeah she loves hearing about all my new adventures as well oh, that's like, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and with escorting like you do kind of tail yourself to each client because mm-hmm. you want to personalize an experience for them sure and, like oh like they have like a big interest in 80s movies but they don't like 70s movies or something just as an example like i might really like 70s movies but i won't talk about that so much because i want 
to keep the focus on the things they like. Right. There's a, there's a bit like there's that level of phoniness. But is it phony though? See, that's the thing. Yeah. It's no more phony than what everybody else does when they're talking to people. But, um, yeah, like you're taking somebody on a date. They don't, they might not show their true colors for like a long time. A long time. People would, um, do themselves a lot of favors if they were a little bit more upfront about who they are. Want a date. Yeah. And especially what they want, like, not just sexually, but just in general. Oh yeah, because people do this like thing where they like, yeah, that'd be great, or like, I love hiking, or whatever it is. Yeah, and like, I don't know, I I really enjoy like you know dudes who are like, okay, I want to do this, this, and this. So you know, okay, now I know what to do, and they like that. Yeah, and they get what they asked for because they asked for it. But right. So many people are walking around like unsatisfied sexually and in life because they're afraid to ask for what they want right because i don't know society looks down on certain things or it's like taboo to talk about sex yeah and And it's a little awkward not for me but (laughs) (laughs) but for a lot of people i mean i'm sure even guys who want to try pegging don't want to ask their girlfriend because they might think this or that oh totally and god there's such a stupid stigma about that like well i can't ask so and so or i can't talk about liking this because that means i'm gay and it's like even if it did mean you're gay like <laughs> yeah. that's still fucking cool yeah There's that's pretty like good that. yeah but yeah. also like how is it gay if it's a girl putting it in your ass no that's true and then yeah. when people get uptight or like argue no no it's gay because like why do you care so much yeah like, it's gay because it's shaped like a penis like my fist is not shaped like a penis <laughs> it's shaped like a fist <laughs> it's a woman's fist it's like my nails are painted <laughs> like it's only it's only gay if you make it gay like you're fulfilling your own destiny you can fist your own ass right oh yeah before um before i ever kissed anybody (laughs) i I love that that. again right right into the deep end yeah yeah because like i wanted to see if i could do it that was my goal and then i kept moving the goalpost after that (laughs) Um, it is tricky to like get as deep as i want to go just because i don't have long spaghetti arms Uh uh-huh sure i would love to have long spaghetti arms but i don't (laughs) and then wrists only bend a certain way sure so how far up can you get well it kind of gets stuck uh here right before the curve in my wrist just because i can't Get yeah, right. You can't get the. But if somebody else is in there, like they can usually get pretty deep. But I'm not much of like a depth person. I'm uh-huh. definitely like a girthy. Oh, okay. Uh, fan. Some people really love like super long toys. Uh huh. Sure. I would just rather put something like really wide but short in my butt. Uh huh. I'm more impressed with like how big I can get it. <laughs> oh sure. Because yeah. with the ass, like, there's not a lot of nerve endings in your rectum, uh-huh. so past like a few inches you don't really feel anything oh okay so you're getting you're getting at least for me i'm getting more out of it by like maximizing the width filling up yeah because my butt doesn't know the difference like between six inches and nine inches or Mm -hmm. whatever does your vagina yeah (laughs) (laughs) but not always a good thing like there's no cervix in my ass so i can i can take like longer dicks in there like yeah there's there's been quite a few times i've been doing a scene and It'll be like anal involved, but the director wants me to start with like a vaginal position. Yeah. And it's just getting your cervix rammed is not fun. It feels like getting punched in the stomach over and over again, okay. like in a not sexy way. Like I have to, <laughs> I have to be ready for that uh-huh. and like in the mood for that. So I'm like, can we just put it in my ass and then you can pound away at it because you're not hitting any walls. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So in terms of uh, really extreme sized dicks, because mm-hmm. uh, you've had some videos with that, right? Yeah, like uh, my friend Dread, he's such a sweet dude. I think his dick is like 12 inches or something. Wow. He might be the biggest or maybe the second biggest guy in porn. There's another guy, I think his name is Vlad or something, but I haven't worked with him, so I can't like measure. It's sure. not like I carry around a measuring tape with me, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, of course, um, yeah. But every time I, I work with him, the first time I worked with him, I couldn't get it in my pussy at all it was just hurting too much wow okay and um so it's, i'm guessing very girthy as well so girthy and also like my pussy is just not really elastic like i've been to the doctor and my doctor is like you have so much scar tissue in here like you're just getting torn up all the time oh, and wow. he's like trying to feel he's like he literally told me he's like you have the vaginal elasticity of a 52 year old woman and you're 22 <laughs> i'm 24 now almost 25 so i had to 
get on like special medication that they give to like menopausal women to wow. help with like elasticity. It's like a medical thing. <laughs> I thought there was something wrong with me and there was. I'm like, I'm I'm just not enjoying sex. Yeah, yeah. But um now that like my pussy is like stretching where it's better. But yeah, every time I work with him and we shoot like OnlyFans stuff in the vagina, like I always get torn and then I can't work for like a week afterwards. Oh, wow. But the butt, like you said. The butt is fine. Even like if my butt gets torn a little or I bleed a little bit, it doesn't hurt. And um, I'm fine the next day. Mm. Like uh, I shot with him once and then like I had like three or four more days of like anal scenes after that. Yeah. And I thought my butthole would just collapse, <laughs> but it was totally fine. But um, yeah, my pussy was broken. So every set I went on, <laughs> I was like, hey, is it okay if this is an anal only scene? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we could do that. Sure. Yeah. Oh my God. In Europe, it's like never a problem. They're like disappointed if you can't do anal. Oh, really? They're it's like, like, what do you mean? But if it's just with one dude, it's only like an extra hundred bucks. So I'm like, I'm not going to do an anal scene for like $600. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, But if it's like part of, if I'm like doing like, I don't know, like a big scene or something, or it, yeah. it's an agreed upon thing where it's like a higher rate and like, Hey, can I only do anal? And they're like, Oh yes, of course. Like we don't know what vaginas are out here. <laughs> Those are just for show. Yeah. Is it? yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that reminds me of a scene of yours that has come up on the show quite a few times. Oh, the prolapse one where you licked the prolapse. Oh yeah. I've licked a few prolapses in my day. And it's so funny. I always thought, prolapsing was like an absolute hard living of mine like i don't want to see them i don't want to touch them yeah. i don't want to prolapse myself and, and, and I, for those who don't know what what is a prolapse what a happens prolapse, with a prolapse it's like a flower blooming <laughs> <laughs> well it's your butthole falls out of itself a little bit uh -huh. and it goes right back in you're not like walking around with like a sausage <laughs> like sticking out of there um those little toys that are like rubber and it's like a tube and it's filled with water you know what i'm talking about I and you squeeze so. them and they like roll in uh, on themselves yes, yeah that's what it is that's what it is okay um, so they're modeled honestly after prolapses probably yeah literally um but oh my god like it came face to face with one i just wanted to put my face in it and it tasted delicious and i'm like okay there's nothing really like that i find particularly gross or offensive about this and then it just went back into her butt afterwards oh okay and she was totally fine and then I was trying to do it for a long time, but it's like with anything else, you can make your butthole strong in such a way that you can prolapse on command and then oh, suck you can? it back in. Yeah, like you can like have an accidental prolapse, but like to make it like really pretty, you have to like practice it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the only time I've had like a really nice prolapse I was satisfied with was um I was getting fisted by a dude. Mm -hmm. And then he pulled it out and his hand was so big, it just kind of pulled everything out <laughs> and then it went back in. But like, I thought it was really cool. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It didn't, it didn't hurt or anything. Oh, wow. Okay. So I just imagined it would hurt. You yeah, know? yeah. But I, I used to like, every time I'd be on Twitter and like, I follow a lot of crazy European, like anal girls, like uh -huh. Hot Kinky Joe and Melissa Wide and the girls who put a lot of big things in their butt. Oh, okay. Every I'll time to check I, them out. Every time I'd come across a prolapse, I'd be like, oh, God, ew. But I wouldn't unfollow him because I love him. Like, yeah. you, you know, you do your own thing. I'll just scroll past the things <laughs> I don't like. And now I'm like, I tried it and I really like it. So don't knock it till you try it. No, absolutely. Yeah. I think it was just more the shock of I'd never seen that before. It's fun. Yeah. It's cool. Or at least I think it is. You don't have to. Are there any uh, porn things that you don't like to watch? Mm, I don't really like incest stuff. I have a twin brother growing up and... I don't know. I've never been like attracted to a family member. I, I just personally find it weird, even if they're like tangentially by marriage related. To sure. Me. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not into it. So I can't yeah. watch stuff that I'm into and then uh, or I can't watch stuff that I'm not into. Right. really. And uh, I don't really like doing those types of scenes because it's so cheesy and the scripts are always so fucking stupid. It's become such a thing in porn. Like I hear complaints all the time like, why are we only doing stepbrother and stepsister porn now? Or that's all the porn I can find. Like, because it got so popular. Yeah. People are making so much of it to like ride that way. Sure. That it's flooded the internet. Go on Pornhub. Like right now, I'm sure like one of the top things is like, oh, stepbrother, stepsister. Oh, totally. Because there's yeah. so much of it. People are like, maybe I, maybe I should be into this because <laughs> there's this, a lot of yeah, it. Maybe so I they should like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the porn, like training people to be <laughs> into shit.
Squirting is a thing for you, right? Yeah. Did it just happen one day or did you discover it? Um, I remember how did that come about? Right. Before, before I got into porn, the person I was dating, he made me squirt. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. And then uh, it would happen by accident uh-huh. in scenes. Um, and then uh, I talked to some girls and they're like, oh, this is how you maximize it and make like, you know, like a super soaker type scene. <laughs> so basically um, you you can drink a lot of water. It's easier if you drink like a sports beverage, like Pedialyte oh. or Gatorade, something yeah. with electrolytes and yeah. saline in it. Because that actually hydrates you more and um, your body flushes it out easier versus if you just drink a bunch of water, your body kind of absorbs it. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys like chug water and they can't piss. (laughs) I'm like, because you didn't drink Gatorade or or like half half the water and then drink a Red Bull because like that'll act as a diuretic. Right. Right. Um, But yeah, so you just super hydrate yourself. You make a full bladder and then some girls can just do it where they pee i have to like get my g-spot stimulated either like by vigorous fingering or like fucking and then um i push like i bear down like i'm Mm -hmm. gonna piss but it's a lot easier if whatever's like touching on my g-spot if like at the right moment i'm like okay like pull out now and then as it pulls out like i just like unleash Uh and then it just feels like pissing at that point and then you just like push really hard and it just like keeps blasting out (laughs) and then once i've um been like made to squirt by force sometimes like somebody can just like finger me and then it'll keep coming and coming okay so after that happens it's a lot easier to do it on command like that day because it's like the seal has been broken or whatever (laughs) i don't fully understand how it works but like i know like how it feels when my body's doing the things i want it to do so i try to copy that yeah um and lean into it yeah totally yeah. what's your favorite date night sort of thing with lance we like really trashy shit like um i'm like babe take me to olive garden and like i just get like a soup and breadsticks or something uh-huh. but like i like uh getting really excited about something that's like really low effort and cheap <laughs> and kind of like cheesy and classless yeah it's fun it's fun yeah it's like I don't know. I'm not really like a fancy person by any means. Uh-huh. Like, oh, take me shopping at Bellagio and then let's go <laughs> do this. Like, I don't give a shit about that stuff. Like, if I want to go shopping, I'll take my own ass shopping. Like, yeah. Yeah. If I really want something, like, I'll ask somebody to buy it for me, but usually I just buy my own shit if it's do, not my birthday or something. Do you have any FinDom clients? Mm, that's something, like, I couldn't really get into. I yeah. think if I really devoted to it, I could. Um, but I get dudes messaging me all the time. Like, I want to send you money. I'm like, okay, do it. Or like, okay, buy me something. But they want like more, like they want to spend like a hundred dollars on my Amazon wish list. but the amount of attention they want is worth more than a hundred dollars. Yes. So I'm not going to give it to them. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, but you do have an Amazon wish list. Yeah. And where can people find that? Um, I'm, I'm going to post it like as it gets closer to my birthday, I took it out of my twitter bio because i just had too many links there and sure. I'm, I'm like okay i only want like a couple places for people to click like i have my my only fans and my t-shirt site and then a link to my instagram but yeah i just want to limit limit it to that stuff that sounds good when's your birthday december 6th oh cool so it's coming right up yeah, yeah. it's coming up yeah <laughs> what sign is that uh sag i'm an aquarian and i i still forget what most of the signs mean (laughs) yeah me too i i don't follow astrology a lot like it's fun to talk about like um i've had friends who've like done my chart or whatever Uh and they're like oh like this makes sense that you have this personality trait because this sign but i think like being a twin like me and my brother we have the same exact birth chart because i was born like a minute behind him Mm -hmm. so everything is virtually the same yeah our personalities like we have a lot of similar traits but yeah. we're also completely different people and we mm-hmm. do shit like really differently where does your twin brother live uh he lives in norcal still oh, okay do you go back up to norcal i don't really like it there too much um sure. but uh he came out to vegas like when i got married and stuff and that's nice uh, i would prefer to him to come visit me because i think vegas is more fun than yeah that neck of the woods yeah it sounds like it to me i mean yeah. this is only my first trip but mm-hmm. yeah so far <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. We have covered a lot of ground. And I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with you. And oh, good. Jonesy's had a lot of fun. Yeah, Jonesy's worn out from this. Yeah, he's yeah. exhausted. He's like, <laughs> you guys are talking a lot. Like, <laughs> He's like sleeping on his feet. 
I guess uh, that that'll wrap up the show. All right. And thank you again for thank doing you so this. Much. Thank you.